Welcome to the Town of Deerfield meeting for the Select Board Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners for November 2nd, 2022. The time is 5 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting, Zoom and me main meeting room in the 8, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if te technological problems interrupt the broad virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus, versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation, um, which is located, the details are located on the agenda, which can be found on the town of Deerfield's website. If you go down to the calendar, you'll see the meeting posted for today. And there's also an agenda link to the agenda there. Um, on that agenda link, you'll see a, um, a link for Zoom. Uh, you can also dial in 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and the passcode is 570012. Um, the FCAT typically will, will broadcast these meetings. Um, but we're meeting early for executive session, so they may be here by, by six o'clock by the time we come back for open session. So um, we will um, enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, and subject to the chair's declaration and a roll call vote, the select board may meet in executive session to discuss strategy for litigation, Judith Rathborn versus Deerfield Planning Board and Deerfield Select Board, Superior Court Civil Docket number 2278CV00032 and Judith Rath Rathborn v. Town of Deerfield et al. Superior Court Civil Docket number 2278CV00037. If an open meeting may have a detrimental, uh, detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town, as chair, I do so declare. Can I have a motion and a second? I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Um, and we invite um, our town administrator, uh, Casey Warren, and our um, town attorney. And I believe we will also be joining, joined with the planning board as well. And uh, we will return right about six o'clock for open session. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you so much. So there'll be a, there'll be a room. Uh, Jay Talliman will meet us in there and we will head on over um, and we'll be back to open session shortly. I, I don't think the planning board. Oh, okay, great. I, I didn't know they were, they were yeah, I think listed, so. Driving. Okay, great, sounds good. All right, so I am getting ready to open the breakout rooms for executive session. Um, I am new here, so pardon me for not knowing everybody's name yet, but uh, who is Jason C that's on the screen right now? Uh, not aware, but he's not one of our attorneys, right? So he won't be coming with us. Okay. Only. And Perfect, so I will make sure that happens in the settings right now. On his way. So as soon as Jim Martin comes in, you're gonna wanna push him in. Chris. Okay, I can do that. Perfect. And, Beautiful. And you can, um, if you want, you can pause the recording. Yeah, that's what I was can, thinking. Yeah. 
pick it up. So we're uh, returning from executive session. Um, first item on the agenda would be uh, public comment. Does anybody have any comments on anything on the agenda tonight? Welcome. Hi. Thank you. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Yeah. Um, I just wanted I, to, yes, me, sorry. Me. Yeah, thank I forgot you. that. Thank you. Deborah Yaffe on um, Hillside Road. Welcome. Thanks. And I just wanted to, uh, my public comment is about um, the anti-hate statement, statement against hate that the select board has written. And I understand yes. there's gonna be a period where you're gonna um, talk about that tonight. Um, I think it's on yes, the agenda. it's on the agenda on to the agenda. Uh, review and then hopefully post yeah, correct, I believe. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to encourage the select board to um, post the statement yes. and, uh, yeah, that I think it's going to have a, a, a nice uh, impact in our town. So here to support you to do that. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Welcome. Hi, I'm Hannah Yaffe, Hi, uh, Hannah. Five Beaver Drive, South Deerfield. And um, I want to thank you for in advance for doing that uh, anti-hate statement and getting it out there. My yes. neighbors are looking forward to it. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. Any other public comment tonight? We'll we'll have a hearing for that. You'll we'll definitely take your input then okay. for sure. Yep. Any other comments about anything else tonight? And can I just ask, is this microphone working? Can people actually hear me? Because it didn't sound like it was working earlier. Okay, yeah. thank you. Good. Good. Yeah, we can hear everyone. Yep. Great. Can you hear Chris? online you can hear us okay too sounds good on my end okay, okay great thanks perfect okay we're seeing no other public comment um we have a liquor license in five minutes so we got to wait a little bit for that um let's see we've got new pro right after that um any select board announcements or anything we want to hit on real quick before we get to 6 15. Do we want to do the do a couple of the minutes? And get them sure, right we can do I, that. Unless that sounds good. Yeah, yeah we have no, August nineteenth. Where are they? <laughs> They're deep in here. <laughs> All right. Get through some of this sort of stuff. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. August nineteenth. All right. Let's see. Yep. Starting with the yep with August nineteenth. So we'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 19, 2020 as written. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? 2022, or is that really August? Yeah, uh, August 20. Hang on one sec. No, this is 2020. Okay. Yep, We've we're going back, back a ways. <laughs> good. That's good. Um, all those in favor? Uh, Tim Hilchy abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nassau, aye. Great. I'll make a motion to approve the September 4, 2020 minutes as written. And I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchy abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I make a motion to approve the member for the minutes of September 9, 2020, as written. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, wait, second. Oh, you got a second. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Tim Hilchy abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I make a motion to approve the minutes of September 23, 2020, as written. Um, second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchy abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Can I make a motion to approve the October 1, 2020 min minutes as written? And can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchy abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. So that was think that's, that's all of them. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we have our anti- uh, any hate statement. We've got a few minutes, so I think I'll just take the moment to read this. Um, this is a select board anti-hate statement. The Deerfield Select Board unequivocally condemns racism, discrimination, and hate in all its forms, and we commit to work diligently to ensure that our town is welcoming and safe for everyone. As elected leaders, we recognize our responsibility to understand and address all racial inequality, we will encourage diversity of voices and representation on Deerfield town boards and committees. As select board members, we pledge 
to strive each day to help foster a community where all individuals can live happily, free of fear, and with a equal access to opportunities, regardless of race, religion, ethnic background, national origin, ability, gender, identity, or sexual orientation. I, I feel like this is really good. And so I would make motion that it's ready to go on our website and that we post it out in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? I'll second you have a question. And, oh. <laughs> I'll second it and then. I just have one question in terms of because the reason they're reviewing this is because we hadn't finalized the um, wordsmithing mm -hmm. in terms of there were some things that the board had discussed before they we're ready to approve it and we didn't have that completed until now correct um the only thing that i have a concern about is sometimes the legal language when you do statements of similar note in official legal documents mm -hmm. it care it may carry more detail so my only concern is just thinking about it from a personnel perspective just to have we usually expand have it council a review more. you mean i'm I don't want to slow it down to the no, extent that No, I think we post it if they have an issue, we can legal, amend it. Yeah, yeah, I just thought, and, and I was thinking about this wasn't my baby to play with. So mm -hmm. yep. I just, not not to disrespect what you want, Deborah and Hannah, and what you know other people want to see. I just wonder if we should add some of the, the items, some of the descriptors that we use in other personnel. No. I would actually like to say that this is a heartfelt message from yes. the select board it and it doesn't need to be legally, you know, vetted because this is how we feel. This yep. is a statement of the select board and I think it reflects the views of the community that we all want to live in peace together. Mm -hmm. So I'm all perfectly. Right. I, I mean, so I, I feel, I feel exactly the same way. I don't, I don't really, this is, this is sincere from mm -hmm. our hearts and putting extra stuff in just to be legal and personal. We can do another and, one if needed. Yeah, All I right. mean, this is just our statement. We have a second? Yeah, yeah I did second. Oh, second. okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Please post. That'd be great. Um, okay, so we are- it will, So we'll go up on the website. Yep. And we'll have a, Casey will try to get something printed out. We'll uh, and, uh, on Thank you, you know, nice presentation to put it out on the lobby. Great. So uh, notice a public hearing, the select. I, uh, can I, oh, oh, just, could we put a date on here? Because yeah. Yeah. Um, of course. I feel like it, it's important, you know, to, when I look back originally, you know, things change. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I also think it, it's important that, you know, if the select board changes at some time, not only do well, they want to update it to be current, but you can somebody read. would might want to do a select it. board approval date yeah, on it. I and I would put it on letterhead as well. Just yeah, so and then because give our that signatures. becomes more official. Yeah. I think and yeah. give our signatures because each each year I think it's important to reaffirm. And right. then whoever's sitting in these seats. Actually, that's a really good reaffirm. So why don't we add signature lines to it and then we can have the board come in at their convenience and sign it. Sounds good. After we print it and, with the and, approval date. Right, the approval date, and then I would it does say more official. that it should be reviewed. I mean, this is yeah, this is November now, but just say at the beginning of every year, this should be reviewed. When so, is a new board? Every time there's, a, I mean, every time we sit here well, new, right? Because there'll be different members. No, not when you have a new board. It just should be an annual review at the beginning of every year. So, but this if they're is, signing this off is, on it. Well, we're signing off on it mm -hmm. in, you know, November of 22. But I would say every end of the year or the beginning of the year, January of 24, someone should be reviewing this. And then January of 25. And then, you know, some reaffirming. Okay. Yeah. Rather than just, because when someone is elected to the board, they're brand new and it takes a little while to... Okay. Settle Fair in. Enough. And so I think the beginning of the calendar year versus a, a turnover of the board, it just should be done whether there's a turnover or not. All right. Moving on. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Notice at public hearing, the select board acting as a local licensing authority for the town of Deerfield has received an application from uh, Safar Kaini uh, on behalf of uh, Deerfield Convenience Store LLC 
for the retail liquor license to sell wine and malt at 513 Greenfield Road. The hearing be held on Wednesday, October, uh, wait, why does this say August 24th? Hmm? Is this old? This is an old public hearing notice. Wasn't, wasn't tweaked. No, it's open. Um, this is an old one from August 24, 2016. So it could have ended up in the Yeah, I think it just ended up. Hour. Yep. This is, uh, it should be Kapoor. Kapoor, right? Yeah. yeah. Mobile, Mobile Mart. Mart. Yep. Is the, is the correct one in right. the Welcome red? Welcome to OU. Thomas Truex. Um, yeah. Mr. Chair, members of the uh, board. Welcome. Thank you. We're going to get uh, the right language, but we'll open our hearing. <laughs> so. Okay. We're, we're okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Tom Truex. I'm attorney in Salem, Massachusetts. I'm peering on behalf of the proposed transferee, Kapoor Mobile Mart, Inc. And I see with me uh, remotely is Mr. Socket Wally. He is the sole officer, director, and shareholder of the corporation. He is also the proposed license manager. Uh, the underlying transaction is fairly straightforward. It is a sale of the assets of the business, um, no neighbors, uh, including the Section 15 package store wines and malt beverage license. There is no financing, there's no bank involved, so there's no pledge involved. Um, it is strictly a cash deal. And you should have as part of your package copies of the bank statements um, showing the uh, amounts in the bank. Um, as for experience, Mr. Wally comes before you with over 12 years of convenience store experience, three years of gas station experience, and about three years of similar package store experience, beer and wine, uh, where he is the owner of Easy Mart, which is a package store, beer and wine, same, same type of uh, uh, store in West Springfield. Um, he's had a clean track record there and he tends to clean, keep the uh, track record uh, here in Deerfield. In addition, the store I informed has a, a point of sale system, which uh, is a card scanner. So like a lot of point of sale systems, uh, when you have a, uh, you scan an item that's a, a liquor item, it'll come up on the screen saying that there needs to be an ID presented. So that's part of the, um, of the um, store, the store uh, security in terms of keeping uh, underage drinkers, you know, underage people coming in and buying alcohol. Um, as for operation, there's going to be no changes, pretty much turnkey operation, same hours, employees will be retained. Um, the physical store layout will remain the same. Um, essentially, there should be a continuity of operation at that uh, location. Finally, while I know Mr. Wally has plenty of experience at the, uh, his store, Easy Mart, um, I always like to uh, uh, review with my clients um, their protocol, their requirements, coding, carding requirements with him. Now, when speaking with Mr. Wally, he pretty much matches what I require of my clients, or I instruct my clients. Um, he tries to only accept Mass, Massachusetts driver's licenses, liquor IDs, mass IDs, US passports and military IDs as a valid form of identification. Um, especially when he's new at this store, he's going to uh, be making sure everyone is carded. The point of sale system should take care of that, but if there's ever a mistake with the point of sale system or it's down, everyone under 50 is gonna get carded. And most importantly with the IDs, you just don't look at the ID and see a, a date of birth. You have to match up the ID with the person that's standing in front of you. So if you have a female that's standing in front of you and the ID says male, you have a problem. If you have someone that's 5'2 uh, standing in front of you and the ID says 6'3, you also have a problem. So he's been really good about his protocol at his store and he intends to follow the same protocol here at this store. Um, I believe it's gonna be a seamless transition from the, new, from the old owner to the new owner and we will be glad to answer, answer any questions you may have. Thank you. So I just wanted to understand, so the current owner is it's, selling the property or is it Mr. Uh, Wally himself? The, the property has already been sold yeah. and the new owner has continued the lease for another uh, two or three years to allow this sale to go through. Any questions you have other than, I mean. No, just me. adequate ID and make tips sure training, that there's right. really um, tips training and that kind of thing. 
is very important. Exactly. Any um, any other comments, questions? Online, no? Okay, I'm gonna make a motion. And if there's no other comments from the board or audience, I'm gonna make a motion to close the hearing. Um, can I have a second? I'd second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Great. Um, I think all the paperwork is in order, and That's I'm sure good to um, I'll take a motion to approve the liquor license transfer. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Thank you so much, and thank you for your help. Great. Welcome to Deerfield. Great. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay, and our hearing's going to open in another five minutes. So let's see. We have a one day window. Yeah, we do have a one day. Let's knock that out too. And it's there for you to get the card. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will. Do you want me to make? I'll make yeah, a motion please. to approve um, the one day liquor license uh, for their tree lighting event on November 17th. And um, the 8th is girls night out event on December 8th. Okay. So I have a second on the first November 17th. I'll second. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And can I have a second on the December 8th Girls' Night Out event? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the liquor license for the Girls' Night Out event on uh, oh, then I'll second that. December 8th, okay. 2022. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. We'll get this done and I'll have this. Yeah, it's fine. Sure. <clears throat> I have that assigned to you. Um, yeah, we did have a uh, resignation. resignation. Um, for, for Jennifer, right? Senior, ad hoc senior housing and CCI. Yeah, she was stepping down so she could focus on her on yes. her other interests. And because she, she is also on CBA, right? She is. She and is not right super now. busy. <laughs> so, yes. uh, so I'll regretfully take the resignation of uh, Jennifer Remillard from the ad hoc senior housing uh, committee and the CCI committee. Um, I'll second that or and, make the motion. Okay. And I'll have a second then. Thank um, her for her time. Did she second it? She made the motion. I can't. I can't. Okay. Uh, I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So I think we're close enough to open the hearing. Um, do I need to read that again? Let's see. Yeah, a couple minutes. Yeah, let me just find that here. I don't see that. Thank you. Where was that first hearing? I think it was our last meeting. No, I was looking for the first hearing language, but I don't know where that went. For what? New Pro? Yeah, for you New Pro. I don't have to read it again. No. You just open it because we you continue. Open, yeah, right? you continued it to this date. Thank certain. You. That's what I thought. You reopen it. Yep. That's why we don't give them to you the second time. Perfect. We get confused too. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, just about six 
30. And um, uh, we'll welcome back up uh, New Pro, um, New Pro Industrial uh, and uh, Berkshire Design here tonight as well. Is Berkshire here tonight? Maybe online? Yeah, this is Greg Henson from Berkshire Design. Oh, welcome. Good. How are you? Okay. Thank you. Good, good. Um, yeah, come on up, guys. Derek. And... So this is a continuation from our hearing um, for the uh, new pro, the expedited permitting process for um, for new pros building in on Merrigan Way. We uh, last time we met, we saw a quick overview of the project, and we um, enlisted um, Berkshire Design to do it to do a uh, peer review of the, of the application and the project. Um, we've got some information back from them. Um, and I assume you've got a copy of that as well? I did. Okay, yes. great. And so we're curious if, um, so I'm not sure if, you, if you've had time to have answers to that or answers back to, to uh, Berkshire Design at all, or how are you? Welcome, good to see you. Yeah, so we've been working back and forth via email with Berkshire Design. Um, Could I ask you to just oh, identify yeah. yourself? Yeah. For oh, sure. Name, yeah, My name is Derek Ely. I'm the project manager from One Development Construction and Design Build Contractor representing NewPro. Thank you. Um, my name is Mark Stanicki. I'm from SBE Associates, the uh, engineering firm on the project. Welcome. Engineering firm on the project. Welcome. And Jeff Ethier, NewPro LLC, managing director and co-founder. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Just Speak into the mic, because otherwise, yeah. Thank you. We've been told no one can hear us. Um, okay. So, um, so you've had back and forth conversations. Um, I, I had a chance to read through some of their comments today as well, and um, just wondering how far you've gotten and where you're at. Go ahead, Mark. Um, we've been working back and forth with Berkshire Design, and we feel that we've satisfied the majority of the comments. Um, a lot of the comments that are left deal with the decisions that the Conservation Commission needs to make. Um, we've satisfied all of the storm model comments that they had. Okay, great. Greg, how, how are you feeling about that? I know there were um, discussions about where the drains came and some of the spots were, you know, under the, appeared to be under the um, water okay. table or high water table, but. Yeah, the, the the only the only open item was the um, discharge of the foundation drain, and they have shown that to daylight out in the bank on the river, and that that's just an issue that conservation commission has to review because it's in their uh, in their jurisdictional area to make sure that uh, the design meets all the requirements. Of the uh, Can you just make could you just repeat that out. so a little bit louder so that um, people in the audience can hear it as well. Okay, so uh, the only open issue is the discharge of the foundation drain. It is discharging uh, within the bank of the river and Conservation Commission has not had a chance to review that in regards to the regulations as far as uh, the protection on the end of that pipe. It's basically just foundation drainage, so there will not be very much flow. So um, it's just a matter of showing some type of protection of that, that, uh, that, that trickle of water that probably will be coming out of the pipe. But that was the only open issue on, on the drainage. Otherwise, SVE has taken care of every other concern we had. Okay. Perfect. Great. Um, could I ask a question? Can just just for people who are probably not familiar with engineering, um, what is foundation drainage, and what would likely be in it, if anything other than water? It's just it's just intercepting groundwater, and that and that's it. Just just to uh, keep the foundation you know of the building the area around the foundation dry mm -hmm. yeah so basically yeah. the water just seeps through the ground and, and just makes its way into this perforated pipe and then drains down and out to uh to daylight it, it's not a significant amount of flow so it's like rainwater or mm -hmm. snow melt that comes off the roof or or the ground and and it just goes into this 
engineered way to shed water away from the foundation of the basement of the building. It is. It and, is not uh, rainwater or snowmelt. It's water that's already made its way into the ground. Okay. And then, and then leaches its way, you know, toward the foundation and gets intercepted by this this pipe. Okay. And then, so and then it's the Perfect. And you mentioned also <laughs> that it's currently directed towards the the brook. Um, if the conservation commission doesn't like that solution, do you have another solution that's equally valid? Um, the other solution would be to raise the building even higher than we already did. Um, right now, it's probably around five feet above existing grade, but we would have to raise it probably a, like another two feet, which even maybe higher fine. than two feet. So it would, it's kind of becoming a balancing act between mm -hmm. the disturbances for the conservation with that or just a single pipe that's discharging to clean clean ground water mm -hmm. to a stream correct okay yep it's not Did, my purview i'm just curious so when um so when i was reading over this so in your design from the comments and now did you guys change the height of the building yes. you did okay i was wondering that that's yeah. correct so yep. we've we've raised the building a foot and a half to accommodate um berkshire designs comments we okay. also eliminated the leaching basins in mm -hmm. in the yep. infiltration ponds themselves so okay um, there's no issue with those basins being below groundwater. Everything is fed through a HDP pipe. Um, yeah. Any pavement goes through the oil water separator. Right. That runoff then goes directly into the pond rather than the leaching basins. Yep. Um, and that was all. We were able to do that by raising the site foot and a half. Foot and a half. Okay. Which that's is about twelve thousand cubic yards. Of yeah. Soil. That's. I was going to yeah. say that's not just. Um, no. you know, a shed. It's about three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I was going to say it's it's, it's a huge yeah. it, it's a huge thing to raise that up. Um, are there? Um, let's see. Any other comments on? There was traffic comments. Yes, I was going to get to that. Clarification. Yep. Um, they cited the VHP study that the town had done in two thousand nine. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what VHP was trying to do with those numbers as the section of the feasibility study that we obtained didn't have an explanation right it looked like they took they did a traffic study of the intersection in downtown at like south main north main sugarloaf yep um that with 2009 traffic and then tried to generate what the traffic would be in 2014 if the site at the time which was the whole pickle site yeah. um, was developed with mixed development. So that could be why the numbers are off. We use the IPE eighth edition trip generator to look at only our development on right. the site um, and not taking into account the pilot precision or the town garage as they're already there. We wanted to see what the increase from just ours would be. Okay. That makes sense because there was all kinds of different plans for that property so there yeah. could have been all you know housing it could have been all kinds of well, different there was things a, that originally 164 units of housing mm. you know proposed there so that makes sense then that yeah. that's i think that's where the traffic study was originally um, developed do um at this point i'd love to take comments i know we have people in the audience if if you'd like to come up you're welcome to sit here uh there's a microphone if, if you have any comments um, or anybody online has comments, you want to talk about the project, you're more than welcome. Or questions. Questions. And while they're, while they're making their way up, I have just one final question, Please. Greg. Um, there was something um, about drains into a dry well. Has that now been eliminated from the plan? Yeah, yes, they've eliminated those. Um, that, that's what Mark was mentioning. So there is no more issue with uh, two feet of groundwater separation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. Come, come have sure. a seat. It's nice and comfortable. <laughs> oh yeah. Feel relaxed. Okay. <laughs> Please. Um, Welcome, hi everybody. Thank you. I'm Sarah Allium. I live at 14 South Main Could Street. Could you speak closer to the mic? Oh yeah, just. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Really? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sarah Allium. I live at 14 South Main Street. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for your time. 
I haven't been able to attend previous meetings, so I might not have all of the most up-to-date information. So my no apologies problem. if I don't. Sure. Um, but basically I've lived on South Main Street for the past seven years. Um, and when we first moved to the neighborhood, I wasn't even aware that there were so many large companies um, surrounding us. It was quiet and we had tons of trees. I had no idea. Um, in the past couple of years, and especially in the last few months, things have really changed. Um, a lot of trees have been cut down along the railroad, along the factories on the other side of the railroad. Um, I hear, I see, and I smell things from other surrounding companies, including a plumbing company, agriculture company, marijuana company, trucking company, freight and passenger trains, and a giant rebar company that operates right across the train tracks from my home. The quality of life has drastically changed. The rebar company operates 24 hours a day and on weekends, and we hear constant noise um, all night long. And in the warmer months, I can't keep my windows open from April until November because of the noise. We hear the sounds of tractor trailers all day and night, sometimes just idling over there when the companies aren't even open. And the traffic in our neighborhood has, I mean, I don't have statistics, but it feels like there are trucks going by all the time. Um, it keeps my kids awake. We have the lights shining in our windows now that the trees have been cut down. And as things have changed, I've tried to reach out to folks here, um, and I've been repeatedly told that there's nothing that can happen at this point. Um, the companies can do what they want because they're in an industrial zone. Um, and I live in a residential zone, and it feels like I live in the middle of an industrial park. And now we're going to think about allowing another, or maybe it's already happening, a 24-hour company. And I don't know exactly the noise level or what will be happening, and so again, Maybe there's more information there, but I am worried about more noise and more lights and more trucks. Um, we're already just feeling really inundated. Um, and before we even talk about adding more, I heard a little bit about traffic, but I've been trying to reach out. Um, and again, I don't have updates, but thinking about that intersection in the center of town and adding more vehicles and more people and just the sidewalks are still not safe for my kids to walk to school, which they need to do. Yep. Um, and so I just, um, I understand that having businesses in town is really important. Don't get me wrong. I know that that's a good thing, but I feel like it's at the expense of the residents who are living and who are there 24 hours a day. Um, and I just feel like I want to make sure our voices are heard. Um, and thank you for listening. Thank you. That's exactly what this forum <laughs> um, is yeah. for. To I was hear just going to say, Sarah, yep. we have um, Alex. I don't, he's, I don't know if he's right here, but we um, did monitor the noise and um, this, this company is not on the same level. As yeah. a rebar company, no. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Well, it's just that once the trees come down, which I know there are trees now blocking a lot of the houses, but things change and sure. I mean, I, it's just... I, I, I think that they will explain their yeah. planting um, plan okay. and their lighting plan. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no smell. There's no noise, um, and the trucks will be only operating seven to seven. I mean, okay. these are things that we we feel are really important to the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that we will have some way to help you out. Thank you. Yeah. It is certainly um, it is that balance right between getting our industrial base and our, our commercial base in town, and and being a downtown with all the businesses around, and it I, it's definitely you know louder than where I live out out uh, out from town. Especially you're right on the tracks. You've got you know like you said the rebar and the fertilizer company and all that stuff kind of around you. Other than mm -hmm. a you know the the well, cemetery is a little quiet, but every everything yeah. else is is kind of loud. But yeah, it is. It's hard to find that balance, and we have to kind of you know put the businesses where they're zoned and um, uh, uh, able to do. But I you know I I think <clears throat> Pilot Precision was a good example of one development built, and they did a very good job of putting in a nice looking building, and and it's quiet I think for the neighbors as far as I'm aware. Mm -hmm. um, pretty quiet facility in this, uh, very similar to that, but there will be trucks certainly mm -hmm. during the day coming through and delivering product and, you know, making the world go around with uh, commerce. So, um, but it is something to look at. And we are, you know, we have funded sidewalks that is very important. I, we've, uh, we thought they would be done this year, but I think the plan is first thing in the spring. Um, they're putting that together to get that stuff done. And we're working with Mass DOT on making Sugarloaf into town much safer. We've got a, we've been working with Joe Comerford on that and some plans with DOT to kind of calm down traffic. And I really think 
working on that intersection to make it safer for the kids to cross and all those things are super important where i feel like we have momentum to do that mm -hmm. but i'm so glad you came today and had your voice heard and um and i don't want you to, to think us. that we're not paying attention yeah we are trying working to towards do those stuff. goals can i ask um is there a plan for coates avenue will that be a through mm -hmm way for that traffic. shut down okay. there'll be no more traffic going in and out of there okay other than to the businesses that are there and you know that are on that road but it used to zip into american right. way yeah. and that will be blocked off okay. and their business will be there and so there won't be that in and so out traffic through american way exactly okay. yep similar with Jewett ave as well yep people Same with still cut through there but that's going to be permanently closed yep and um as far as your preferred traffic pattern for your trucks will you be going out Sugarloaf Street towards 116, or do you envision coming through the town and the center of town? Sure. I would think, um, you know, one is one is probably easier to manage than the other, but do you have a plan? I, I would imagine most of the stuff would be coming off of 91, right? And mm -hmm. they, they would be coming down 116 to Sugarloaf Street and taking a left onto Merrigan Way. Yeah, yep. coming in that way. That would be beneficial to you, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Less trucks. Not, I mean, there's a lot, so I don't know where they're all mm -hmm. going. Yep. Would you just because it's been a while since we've had our last one? Would you mind just walking the public through your plantings and lighting sure. and that kind of stuff again, just so everyone had a good good sense of where Sarah, we're at? Thank you. Yeah. And thanks I, for coming. We, and if there's any, oh, we, we have are... another comment. Oh, please. Yeah, please come up first. Yeah, that way. That way, if you have something that sparks, we could talk about it after. So just have a seat. State your name and yeah. Uh, Mark Donovan, thirty-four South Main Street. Uh, Deerfield. And, Thank you. Uh, lived here, moved from East Hampton, Mass, where we also have a lot of industrial uh, activity, uh, especially in the neighborhood I used to live in. Um, and so we have the train, like Sarah said, the train going across the street, and we have Pilot and Back and the DPW and mm -hmm. such. Uh, and we, of course, have the Brook there. Um, and when the winter comes or the fall, the leaves fall down and it, the trees uh, are bare. And then the light from pilot comes blasting uh, all night long uh, out. To, so there's light pollution already. Um, so I'm going to be sound repetitive, but the big things, I think, I mean, in my book, we want to, uh, I understand this project is, it's rolling, it's, it's happening, but we'd like to be good neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to assume that you want to be too. Um, and uh, you're probably going to speak to it a little bit, it sounds like, but uh, light is obviously an issue, the, the blasting of lights and when they're on and such, and maybe they can be dimmed. It sounds like there might be a plan. Um, the trucking, obviously, it's been spoken about when it happens. Is that in writing that mm -hmm. it's seven to seven? It is. Because uh, things happen and deliveries get late. And right, and we, are, we did apply a little buffer to that. So mm -hmm. typically our hours are eight to five. Right. So gotcha. sometimes you so get that phone call to seven is I'm running buffer. a little late. Can I come in at six? And we want to be able to. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, also, uh, I've spoken to people that I know about, I don't know much about uh, the polyurethane film <laughs> industry, um, but one thing uh, I know so little that uh, I guess I should ask, is it, is there water being used when the melting down in the, or is it all solvents? No, no solvents, no water. No water. No, it's a it's a solid in in bead form, and we simply melt it and shape it okay. out of a slot die into a film. Got you. And is there waste material that needs to be collected, or or, and does it go? Does it get washed down the drain, or is it collected in barrels and shipped out? Uh, does it stay on site or does it get shipped out every once in a while? So there, there is scrap, there's yeah. edge, edge trims and startup that's out of spec. Uh, we reuse some of that and some of it we do uh, sell out as recycle. Okay. Um, there is, 
uh, the foundation drain was just spoken about. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, that's about groundwater only, and there is nothing coming from inside the plant going. Okay. Um, plantings, it sounds like, again, you're going to speak to it, but are there going to be ever vitis everywhere or or is there, could we maybe have sound walls put up or what can, what can we ask for uh, and what can we um, get to make sure that it doesn't, that we say good neighbors? Mm -hmm. um, that's, I, I don't guess. think there is any sound. Um, well, there must be some sound uh, from machinery or the gener are there backup generators on the roof? No that backup maybe, generators. No they backup they draw generator. so much power that it's not feasible to put a large generator in. Okay, so if you lose power, you just shut down for the day. That's correct. The only thing that would kick on at that point is a, a diesel fire pump if needed. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. That was one of my things. Was the, do you have diesel generators on the roof? It's okay. it's no no diesel generators. There is a diesel fire pump for the the protection of the building itself, um, but it is code compliant. It's in the building. In a, in a fire pump room, it's not outside. Um, the exhaust will obviously have to come out the wall when, gotcha. when it does turn on, but that's almost, unless there's a fire rarely. And the other thing is I, I haven't seen the map, but uh, the loading docks, which way are they going? And is it possible, this is probably way <laughs> late to say something like this, that they're more, if the building was in more of a horseshoe that they were contained, but I, I'm not sure how they're facing. But so, um, yeah, those are my thoughts, concerns at this point. Well, thank so. you for coming to share. Thank Appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. So um, why don't you explain your plantings and your design? Yeah, the layout, layout. and stuff, where it all looks. Yeah. You, why don't you, can you, you want to move over here sure. so you can see what's happening? <clears throat> yep. So the proposed layout of the building is in parallel with Milligan Way. On the eastern side of the building, there's going to be the employee parking lot. On the western side of the building, it's going to be the loading dock and trash receptacle. Um, there's a large detention infiltration basin along the western loading dock apron, as we talked about with Greg and dealing with the storm model um, solutions. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a northern basin that semi wraps around the east. There's going to be a stockade fence that borders the property line and continues the existing one that's on site. There's going to be a security chain link fence around the whole property. As the project's in Riverfront, which is a conservation commission area for jurisdiction, mm -hmm. we have to propose mitigation for the impacts that we have on it. So we created a planting plan and we're proposing planting around the perimeter of the property within the riverfront of all. Um, Local. Local, yeah. Local plants and tree types. Um, and then we have some trees that we're proposing along the eastern property line as well. Could you um, just indicate where the residential houses are in on that map? So there's residential houses along, excuse me, Sugarloaf, Yo, and these houses. Um, there's the houses along Theo Street, and then there's residential houses along this property line and Duke Hill. But there was vegetated, existing vegetated woods that cover the brook. That's the blacksmith brook that goes along and then falls down South Main. Yeah. Yep. Um, the brook forms the northern property line of mm -hmm. the parcel and then cuts off the access to South Main Street. 
When you said native, um, talking about native plantings, are any of them deciduous? Um, the majority of them, uh, I think I saw red maple and then right, you know, various kinds of shrubs. Yeah. But is there anything that would address a light concern? Um, um, and could you indicate wanna... could you indicate where the the lights that are going to be on um, are for these folks? I think you minimize the number of light poles yeah, right. to try so and address we... some of the light concerns. Right, you have a lighting plan. We have a full photometric plan that shows the light pollution. Right. Of but I think the concern was that you know there would be more evergreen kind of plantings, maybe, right? So I, we don't want to just only plant evergreens around the boundary as mm -hmm. conservation doesn't particularly like uh, right. just I, I agree. Right. right. It should be a mix. Um, we can add additional evergreens. But as you can see, most of the lighting is up along the western side of the building or the eastern side of the building where the exits for egresses. There is security lights on the on northern part of the building, but if you look at the photometric plan, the lower the number, the least amount of lights being shown. It shows by the time that it gets to the prop, property line that it's a 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 um, <coughs> compared to the 0 0.9, 0 0.5, where there's the loading dock doors. Mm -hmm. um, the main areas where there's going to be lights is on the loading docks, the two um, 25 foot um, post lights in the, on the western side and the two on the eastern side. And then there's two security lights on the north side of the building, on um, this area, there's a couple of, a few gear, and then along the southern side of the building. And, and those then, face down, yeah, correct? So yeah, they're all dark sky compliant lighting. It's not like a spotlight that shines out. Yeah, it's out all going to be cut off, full cut off lighting. Okay. That's proposed. So using the western side, which is the border where the house is on South Main Street, is where the loading dock and the majority of the lights are. Yes. Yeah, we had a comment previously about screening that western side so we changed out the blueberry bushes that were proposed to um east on pine to provide more screening year round up high so they're more of a high high bush yeah. instead of something low yeah like it's similar bush. to the the same pine trees we planted on the back side of dumont um they're eastern pines so they'll grow very tall very fast yeah um, and they're coniferous right so yeah. And we added those per the previous meeting's comments. Okay. Where, where did you add those? Sure. On the west side? Or? Yes, yes. We added them along the right field in this area. We have a set of these plans so people can come visit them, correct? Mm -hmm. Up here. These, um, these are the latest oh, uh, we okay. did. We did send them today. If you want me to plot them out and bring a set for tomorrow, I can do that. Be good just to have them. Sure. People want to come and look at the lighting and stuff. You could come and visit, take a, yeah. take a peek at that. And possibly remove the other ones if they're outdated. Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Chair, we had um, the light, the lighting plan is the, the light pollution is almost not at the property line. It meets compliance with zoning <laughs> bylaws. We're using full cutoff fixtures. Um, We've planted the plantings along that side to address the buffer zone. We're also running fencing. There is some nice natural vegetation. As far as I'm just going to address all the concerns I heard. Yeah, please. And, and if anybody has anything else, I'll go from there. So as far as noise pollution, um, last meeting, we, we threw the offer out. Somebody did come by the facility. They're not here tonight, but yeah. they, they went in. The noise is minimal. You don't hear it outside the facility. Um, so as far as noise pollution, we don't have any big, all our HVAC units are indoor units. We're actually using um, 
we're using a chilled water system that they also use for part of their process cooling. Oh, nice. um, so we're using chilled water HVAC units that are all pad mounted inside the building. So there are no big units outside the building, um, no big condensers outside the building that, you know, there will be some items for their process cooling, some dry air coolers and stuff, but those decibel that we've um, ordered them were air uh, sound enclosures okay. um, that reduce the decimals permissible limits. Um, I believe it was, you guys were looking for like 50 dBs at the 30, 30 foot range and we'll hit that value, right? Okay. Um, so all those questions on noise are kind of self-solved from the last meeting. In regards to traffic, we talked about that. That's going to be seven to seven with the buffer between. Traffic's going to be coming down to the loading docks, backing up to the dock doors, pulling out. I know a concern was idling trucks, running trucks, um, you know, but that's all during business hours. You have traffic mm -hmm. going down the road, right? And, right. Um, you know, I, I think with the prices of fuel, more, more drivers are being more conscientious about turning off their vehicles anyways. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the employees, the plan is to eventually go to three shifts. We did talk about that, um, yeah. be a 24 seven operation, but the, the only traffic you're going to have in the, the hours are going to be employees leaving at shift change. Right. right. Um, so it's going to be very limited. It's not a very loud operation. Um, they're actually operating on Sandy lane now in Waitley, and they also operate out of the old Deerfield plastics currently. Yeah. You probably don't even notice them there. That's how quiet they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I captured everybody's comments, but if I missed something, feel free to let me know. Yep. I'll say how many trucks a day. So that does vary. I think I, I looked back at some of the delivery logs. We've never had over 10. Some days there's one, two. Average on a, on a week can be six. So okay. it does vary, but we do not have dozens of trucks. But I'm just thinking of that, the backup beep, beep, yeah. beep, beep from all day long. Oh. And do, do you have trucks yourself? We have one box truck. You have one box truck. Right. Mostly these Just because we go back and forth between the two facilities right now. Gotcha. Be a lot less of that. So in one spot. <laughs> right. We're in one location. I don't think we'll even need our own. That's right. And then so it's mainly just people bringing product or picking up product picking to up. ship out. Right. Yeah. Mr. Chair, we did have two people use the raise hand function on Zoom. I believe they wanted to have some comments. Okay. Uh, the first one was the person whose screen name is DR. And after that, it was Alex White. They both have since put their hands down, so I'm not sure if they still had input, but I think they would like to. Sure. Hey, this is Deborah um, R. Uh, yeah, I forgot I had done that for a different Zoom that I was on. Not okay. trying to hide. Not trying to hide from y'all. Here I am with my picture. Um, yeah, I think that. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we yeah. can. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that my questions actually aren't so much for the company and are more for the select board in terms of it, you know, I'm still new here, learning my way that you all also wear public health, the or the public health board or board of health. Am I saying that right? That's your That's other correct. hat. And so I think I'm wondering if there's going to be any separate meeting that kind of focuses um, on that or and or if there are particular questions that you all need to or want to ask with that hat on i think i i've heard a lot of very um helpful reassurances about there's not smells there's not waste there's not all these things but what if there is someday right or what if what if things we don't know the, you know we're talking about the waitley facility this is going to be much larger and so and i'm also hearing that understandably why there's not a generator what if something goes wrong what is what are the implications for emergency management so i guess my um yeah my concerns um are about that about what questions you all have with your board of health hat on and then my other question is really for us to look at in the future about what it means to do these expedited permits because what i've heard from so many people including at least five who couldn't <clears throat> couldn't be here tonight because of having things with their kids' schools and other things is that it just feels so rushed in terms of us having the time, like even when the Deerfield um, review went, uh, not Deerfield review, Berkshire design review went up and us being able to review it. And so I guess my hope is that for something like this in the future, I understand, it's the last thing I'm gonna say, I understand that things are often expedited um, because we want to make sure the company comes here. I've heard you say that, Trevor, and they don't, you know, go somewhere else. 
but what are we losing by having the time to to really if if we want to fully hear each other let's have enough time and not bring this um in a way that the planning board wasn't even um really involved and um yeah maybe i'll just leave it at that thank you um this uh was a degraded site um it was industrial it was oxford pickle previously and um, we made it be an expedited permitting site because the town bought it and wanted to control um, what was built here. We wanted clean, good industry that um, would be good neighbors. And um, that's, that's why it was set up this way. So the, the, the reason you have, um, you know, expedited permitting was something that was set up back in, I guess, 2009 when, when we purchased the property. And it was to facilitate um, and have some control over what businesses went into the site. Um, I don't think there, there's no other property in town that is set up for expedited no. permitting. Normally, the planning board would be doing the same review. So it's just that the select board takes over and does it in this in this instance. So I don't think you'll see it. I mean, this is the last lot in that spot and we don't own any other uh, property. So this, and, and so, and we do the same process the planning board does. Um, and it's so expediting just means that it's the select board that does it and we have a little more control and can control what businesses go in and don't go in and have a little more control over that that project but um and it what's that it, it's a statutory time frame correct of 180 days um so the um as uh, as a board of health, I've looked at the project. I don't see any. I don't have any concerns no. over board of health issues at, at the plant. Um, I don't see nothing stands out to me. And if something changes in the future, we always, you know, if we get complaints, we would obviously look to an address. And there were worries, you know, what was going on with Pilot when that went into that place. And we've had no no issues there. But for sure, we're always available if, if something comes up, if there's something, you know, that is causing harm to somebody. I mean, I'm sure your employees will be first ones to kind of let you know. We'll, but we would we would kind of step in and take a look as, as Board of Health. But as far as looking at the the building itself and what they're planning to build there, I don't have any concern. Um, I know that the fire departments look, you know, looked at traffic and how, how they're going to get in with fire trucks and safety and emergency response. Um, we have good, you know, good road, good infrastructure, and you're wide and open to be able to get the ladder trucks in in case there's a fire, all of that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of what I look at for, for Board of Health stuff. So we try to follow the process that's laid out by law to for this expedited permitting thing, but it, this will be the last one the select board does, I think, in my lifetime. I don't think there's any other property that we'd take over and do that system. Do you mind if I? Oh, please go ahead. I'd also like to add that you know, um, you know, the whole purchase of the property was put forth through a RFP to the town of Deerfield, and we filled out a pretty detailed package for that RFP to to be awarded the property, um, and. At that point, if if they thought it was a bad bad option for the town, I imagine they wouldn't have awarded it to us then as well. Sure. Um, this is strictly in regards to zoning enforcement at this meeting and making sure we comply by the town bylaws for the zoning. And you know, in the last meeting, we agreed to sit down for the peer review. We've we've done that due diligence. The peer review has come through. There's no major zoning infringements um, or or issues with Berkshire design and Greg, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but from all our conversations, no zoning issues in related to the project. And then I would like to just add, um, you know, we're taking a degraded site that right now is discharging stormwater through old catch basins and there's old sewers and old things that are discharging and you're getting I and I into your, your wastewater, which is costing the town money. We're improving this site. Um, I, I recently, glance at the site website, town website, and I noticed the healthy soils in Deerfield. I went through that. You know, I know that's not enforced, but we are meeting a lot of those requirements. Our construction debris is sent to a facility, which is sorted through. We're using recycled aggregate in the parking lot areas, which is basically, you know, old concrete. So we're using recycled materials for the building on the, on the outside, not on the inside. Um, we're also bringing in fresh topsoil and, and making this place actually pervious where it's vastly impervious right now. Most of the site's covered in, in gravel and sand and grown with weeds and overgrown. And we're really 
doing our due diligence to make this project beneficial to the town of Deerfield and its residents. Um, you know, I live in Greenfield, like you probably know, because I probably mentioned it. This is exactly the type of business I would want in Greenfield. And I would, I would even say, you know, if it was in my neighborhood, I've been working with New Pro for over three years and their business is clean. I'd be happy to have it. Mm. Okay, thanks. Can I just mention that um, we have okay. the healthy soils um, recommendations that are not, um, we haven't worked on them yet. So I just want to say thank you, Derek, for looking at it and seeing that you are, you know, doing as much as you can, even though obviously we haven't adopted anything yet. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, there are a couple other hands up as well. Deb, you had one quick follow-up. It's going to go real quick. Yeah, I just wanted to say I appreciate what you just shared um, on the company side, but my questions were genuinely for my elected representatives. And so I guess my, follow my only follow-up right now is if they're saying things like it'll be seven to seven and it's outside of that, um, are there things that can be written into any of the agreements right now to I'm not a close by neighbor, but to, I'm very moved by hearing the people who are speaking. Is there anything that can be done in advance um, around, you know, if if like basically what what's the mechanism for if things are not lived up to that are in, in there? Well, a lot of that is is the town bylaws as well, like the you know certain traffic and noise and uh, and stuff on sites. As you build the project as well, there's guidelines that that go go into kind of the time they can work and noise they they make all of that. Um, the um, the other thing that's kind of in this as well is that is the TIF, uh, which is the you know tax incentive agreement that we've we've done that if they you know we hold them to you know meeting certain standards uh, to to to. Um, to be in full compliance of the TIF, so so that's part of that. But generally, it's our you know it, it's our it's our um, health inspector Alex. If there's an issue that he, he would reach out, or if there was a complaint, you know, a, a chief would go down and, and take a look if anything's going on. We have our you know uh, Bob Walden, our building inspector and zoning force zoning enforcement officer would would be involved with the project all the way through, and then and then when the businesses are involved, they would also be um, be looking out for the town and. And we're always here to take take any comments that you have. You know, if you have something that comes up, just reach out to us, and we we want to address it. And I know that they want to be good neighbors as well. So, um, Jason, see, you've got your hand up, and then Margarita, and then <clears throat> Anna Lee and Alex across the top. So, welcome, well, Jason. Hey, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I have uh, a question for the um, the Jason. Can you just speak up a little bit? Oh, sure. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I've got a question for for most of the parties that have spoken so far. I'll start with the the first one for for New Pro and and one development. Um, I'm I'm intrigued by the project. It's it's probably the largest building that's been proposed in town for for quite some time, um, and I'm interested to hear. I've read through the the narrative that's been shared publicly. And I'm interested to hear what the plans are for the facility to comply with the Massachusetts Stretch Energy Code as Deerfield is uh, a stretch code community. Um, and I, it, it wasn't clear to me what, what, how, what the approach is there um, for the facility. Great question, Jason. Sure, I could tackle that. So um, we have a signed off comm check by the architect on the building envelope itself, which is one of the criteria required for the stretch code. We are also in compliance with um, the mechanical and HVAC design with the stretch code and the electrical use. So we've, we've, we know Deerfield is a stretch code member. We're using uh, four inch insulated metal wall panels, which boasts an R value of R32. Um, there's an R36 in the roof. So the envelope in the building is about as, energy efficient as possible to meet those stretch code requirements. And we wouldn't be getting a building permit if we didn't meet those stretch code requirements. That is part of the building permit review. And I have all that document laid out for the building inspector. Okay. Um, my understanding is for the facility of this size that a prescriptive path isn't sufficient um, and that performance-based compliance is required to demonstrate 10% better than the current energy code. But um, I'll let the building officials handle that um, as appropriate. The, yeah. the next question I have is um, 
relative to the process itself and whether new pro um, uses materials or um, utilizes PFAS in any way in, in your process. Utilizes, PFAS. what was that? PFAS? PFAS. I do not know what that is. Uh, our, That's our, the, our, the poly poro, uh, uh, perfular, uh, poor, uh, alkaline uh, substances. So it's, uh, it's a forever chemical. Um, so I think, I think you guys have plastics. So do you guys not use that in any of your materials? We, we do not add any, any additives to the materials that we purchase. Okay. And there's no byproduct of PFAS? I've been doing for 30 years and I have not. And there, there in, is in no. It's, pellet, it's pellets, right? And it's usually yeah, it's like, you pellets. see that, like that happened a lot in the, in the, the Berkshire and the Hudson, right? You get a lot of PFAS that was in these, these companies that manufactured. <laughs> and then they had this wastewater that would go out to the river and all the PFAS kind of settled in there and cancer causing, right? It's mm -hmm. in, it's in everything, like because of our our world, it's everywhere and we're trying to, trying to deal, but I don't think you have a waste stream of water to be fast no, to get out, right? No, my so there's no discharge at all. The, there's no, from, from their process rooms, their clean rooms, there is no water discharge. Um, when they go into uh, cleaning mode, it's, it's all wiped down cleaning. Everything is wiped down with a rag and a cloth. And then there's no floor drains in that room to allow any of the water to go anywhere. It's mopped and it's left. Do you use any no, solvents to no. clean your equipment? No. No. We'll typically use Bon EME if we're polishing chrome. Mm -hmm. um, but no toluene or any of that kind of thing. No. We'll use mineral spirits to clean our idlers mm -hmm. to remove any type of uh, you know, residue from, from your fingertips and grease, oils, things like that. But yeah. Any, any other questions, Jason? Um, just one more I was taking a peek at the the plans here and i heard some commentary earlier about the foundation drain um and i was looking at these um stormwater basins and was curious to know what it, maybe greg or if the folks from sve have done test pits and identified what the groundwater table is on the site mm -hmm. Yes, um, test pits were conducted, and that's the reason why there was such a large shift of the design of the basins. We now meet the two foot separation that's required by mass um, stormwater standards. We meet actually all of the standards that are applicable since it's a redevelopment project. Um, as you said, you brought up the foundation drain. The foundation drains just directing clean groundwater away from the foundation of the building. So in frost conditions and freezing conditions, there's no pressure against the footing. Um, yeah, I, I understand the in, I intent think, of the foundation drain. Is the, is, the, um, is the intent that there'll be standing water in these basins year round? No. no. The soil out, the soil that was found out on site is a very nice sand. So. Um, we did drawdown calculations as part of stormwater standards and the longest that water for a two year storm, which would be in the basin, um, is like seven hours. Um, otherwise the water will infiltrate the ground and the basin will be dry. So you've got adequate separation between your bottom of basin and your groundwater table. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Okay. No further questions from my end. Well, thank you very much, Jason, for your questions. I really appreciate your input. Yeah, thanks for the time. Yep. Uh, Margarita, welcome. Okay. Hello. Hi there. Um, I just Hi. would like to start by saying thank you to the select board who has worked so tire tirelessly during this pandemic. Um, I just want to thank you for what you've done these last few years. Trying to be um, and I also want to thank Derek, who um, really answered some of my questions. So my name is Margarita and I moved to Deerfield in 2007. I live behind the DPW um, and I give you that time frame because I experienced my neighborhood and my backyard um, before the DPW was built during its construction and when it became a permanent fixture. Um, and 
I bring to my questions the experience. So this is not having my the DPW behind my house is not a neutral impact. Um, and just to have a moment of levity, the neighbors on Fair Street, we're not getting a museum or a park, we're getting a factory. So mm -hmm. I just wanna, I'm taking this moment to talk about my neighborhood and my backyard. So the 124,000 square foot new pro factory will have a permanent impact on the surrounding neighborhoods. And the factory will run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I am concerned about the tractor trailer noise and I want to talk about how Fair Street's going to be impacted. According to the maps, it does not look like there's going to be any tree barrier for Fair Street. And because the town made the decision years ago to cut off all other exits, Merrigan Way is going to bear the entrance and the exits of all those trucks on top of all the trucks from the DPW. That's it, that road that runs along Fair Street. So I wonder if there could be some discussion of any barrier that could be put up to sort of protect Fair Street. Um, I'm concerned about the parking lot, which is gonna be lit up all night long. And as was, I think I could hear people talk about that the factory will be lit up all night long. My concerns about noise and light pollution, is this gonna be like living in a mall parking lot? Are we eliminating night for the neighbors? Are we eliminating peace? Um, the other concern I have is about possible contamination of the aquifer. There's a fuel tank located on the DPW. As we discussed years ago, the water table in that area is sloped. So frequently basements on Fair Street fill up with water. A leak would make all those houses condemned properties. How will the magnitude of this building and the intensity of its traffic impact the fuel tank? Is anything being done to protect it? And Derek, thank you for talking about the uh, fuels and the idling trucks. I am concerned just for the record on what the impact of diesel fuel fumes on the neighbors will happen as these trucks idle. How much diesel fuel running into homes is acceptable or healthy? As an abutter to the DPW, when a truck idles for even 10 minutes, my house, my whole house, fills up with noxious fumes. I'm curious how many floors high this factory will be. I'm not clear on that. Um, and lastly, does Nupro know of a sister company, which is also located in the neighborhood, so some of us can get an idea of the impact? The Pelican Plastics Company on North Main Street is set back from the neighborhood. Um, it also has two, it has an entrance and an exit. And I'm wondering, you know, the new pro will not be set back. It'll be right in our neighborhood. This building will have a permanent and enormous impact on the neighbors, the, their property values, the traffic on Sugarloaf Street and our downtown area. It would be helpful if this process could be slowed so we can plan ahead for the best possible merging of this factory with our neighborhoods where citizens of Deerfield live and sleep and have peaceful use of their homes. Once built as evidenced by the history of the DPW, it will be impossible to reduce its impact. And I wanna take this moment and give a shout out to Kevin Scarborough and all the wonderful people at the DPW and the things that they do to mitigate what it is like to live right behind the DPW. In this instance, I want everyone to hold the realization that the DPW is town owned, but this factory is not going to be town owned. So I just don't know how that will work, but I thank everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Margaria. And Lee. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, comments that the select board um, through this expedited process has been working in lieu of the planning board, which has a different process, um, but wants to be respectful of planning board uh, regulations and procedures. And also that earlier there was a statement that certainly the asphalt um, is being recycled in many, in many situations. At a previous meeting, um, another planning board member and I both spoke up about our concerns with the water table, with climate change, and with the 94 uh, car parking lot of impermeable um, 
what it asphalt. Um, we weren't given much um, assurances then that that might be addressed. I can, I'll have to say that I couldn't quite tell from the peer review um, or the uh, additional um, designs whether or not that has been looked at differently. I, I would certainly hope that that could be looked at. And I also want to thank Jason and Margarita for their comments. I think that these uh, both of those uh, residents really spoke very clearly and um, as did many of the other residents this evening. And I hope that um, it can, those, those comments can be addressed substantially, not just in tonight's passing meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Anything to add? Um, I wanted to just ask our peer reviewer, Greg, are you still here? I am, yes. So um, at what, I don't feel comfortable agreeing to anything until I've actually seen my peer reviewers' responses and, and, and read the documents thoroughly. I think that's my job. But is there anything that you are currently working on that is a concern for the select board that you want to flag up? Um, the, the only issue was was the uh, Conservation Commission being able to review that, uh, that foundation drain discharge. Um, uh, as far as we're concerned, SVE has, has taken care of uh, all the other issues that, that we were reviewing. And so when will you have a written document to the select board for our review? Is it fully finished today? Is this what we were given? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure that that's the final product so yes, that everybody that is from us. Yes. Okay. Is aware that the select board has what we asked our peer reviewer to do was to review this. Yep. Um, and I do want to just ask um, out of courtesy for people who maybe not didn't attend this previously. Um, in your process, um, has NUPRO ever done any environmental testing outside their facilities to talk about, is there any release of any kind of vapor or anything? I know you've represented that there isn't, and I, I trust that that's correct. But what, what can you tell us about your past? Um, have you ever had any violations or that sort of thing? And how have you addressed them if you did have them? And if you didn't, um, that's something that the town would like to know as well, I think. Mm -hmm. So we have not had any sort of environmental studies uh, performed on the exterior of the building. Um, I've been doing um, polyurethane extrusion uh, films for almost 30 years with another company a little over 20 years in Greenfield. Right on Adams Road, there's three facilities. Uh, one of the facilities there uh, abuts homes. There was never any anything brought up during those uh, during those years I had spent there, those decades, um, and I am not aware of any similar types of you know companies similar to what we do that have had things like that done because it is considered a clean operation. The polyurethane itself is uh, free of halogens and, and phthalates and such, uh, where vinyl products can leach chemicals into the landfills where polyurethane does not break down and, and leach any of its chemical components into the water, into the ground, into you know any type of uh, soils. What is the film used for? Uh, paint protection, 90% uh, of what we do, it's, it's paint protection on cars. It's a clear uh, material that we sell to uh, coders who apply adhesives and top coats that We'll then sell it to the installers who wrap the cars to protect the, the paint from um, chips. As they're delivering and stuff, you see them. No, it's, it's oh. not those wraps. It's oh. uh, an aftermarket wrap. Some cars come from the factory with it. Mm -hmm. uh, about 5% of the cars that are uh, you know, produced have that from the factory. So it's an aftermarket sold at the dealer. <clears throat> I see. So you can essentially you know, key your car or have a chip come or a rock fly up and hit it and it, it will bounce off the polyurethane film and propel up into the air and not chip your paint. You also have applications in um, like windmill blades and that sort of thing. Right, so the and same polyurethane films are used to protect 
from abrasion basically. So that's it's in a lot of applications, uh, screen applications, uh, monitors, uh, touch plates, touch plates in hospitals. They'll actually incorporate antimicrobials into them to kill staph and E. coli um, infections, mm -hmm. and the materials can be. You know, they're basically invisible, so you don't really see them. So a, a common place where a, a person would interact with this might be their cell phone or? Right, most of the cell So typically, oh, 10, 15 years ago, it was all polyurethane films, but it has moved to glass applications now um, mm -hmm. for costs. Did I miss a question? Of course. Yeah. Um, okay, Come up, to state it. your name. And <clears throat> Deborah Yaffe at uh, Hillside. Hi. Yeah, I'm interested in knowing, um, since it doesn't break down, where, where do you recycle? Do you recycle um, what, what's left over from the process? Right. We recycle and reuse as much as we can. There are materials that we have to discard. So mm -hmm. there are either scrap recyclers that buy your products or we discard it um, okay. and pay to have it hauled off site. Because I know there's a lot of advances in recycling right now and upcycling plastic, mm -hmm. and it just takes a lot of money. Right. Um, so I was just curious as to, you know, if you're <coughs> looking into, yeah, where you're recycling or who's purchasing it, because, mm -hmm. yeah. Our um, resin suppliers are uh, continuously working on ways to take our products and re, you know, put it back into uh, materials that can uh, potentially handle those types of you know, be used in different applications. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, yeah, for, thanks for that. Yep. I guess my last comment would be a question. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about how large buildings like this in industrial zones that abut residential properties um, create problems that from a strictly code perspective might actually meet code, but do create living difficulties, light pollution being one of them. And um, I respect that uh, both our peer reviewer and, and your engineers are working with state of the art and they're trying to make sure that they mitigate as much as possible um, and within meeting the safety requirements so police and fire can be in, in, the, in the vicinity of the facility at any time of day or night. Um, would you be willing to a year from now revisit this with the residents and say, you know, we could use a tree here or we could use some some green bushes here that would restrict the light that we're experiencing now that the facility is constructed. It's, you know, there's oftentimes a distance that you're going to be a year in construction or maybe 18 months or maybe, mm -hmm. you'll, maybe you'll build it quicker. I don't know. But once it's built and the bushes you put in and the trees you put in have had a chance to grow, that's the reality of it. So is that something that you would be willing to, you know, discuss with the, the residents? And, and I think maybe we talk to the DP, DPW about that as well, um, since the town owns the DPW building. So is that something that's... So I, I will comment on that. So when I built Pilot Precisions, there was a neighbor, um, the second house down from Jewett Ave, I believe it was... Uh, no, Stephen Ripko, I believe it was. And... He had a complaint about one of the lights somehow coming into the back his back window um and the select board actually reached out to me mm -hmm. and i had it corrected within two days um, Thank you. i'm i'm not in the business to build things and run away i want my client to be happy i want the residents to be happy that's what i do you know mm -hmm. I, I want everybody to be satisfied and we want to be good neighbors right as far as reviewing after a year that that gets kind of tricky because you know, mm -hmm. you have to look at the financial burden too. If you come back and, and say, "Hey, we want sixty foot trees prop planted around," you, you know, <laughs> no. it have to. It would yeah. have to be within reason, right? right. So, yeah. you know, and obviously, I'm not looking to pin you down to anything. I'm I'm looking to show the neighbors that you know you want to be good neighbors, and mm -hmm. within reason, you'd want to make adjustments <laughs> that are are reasonable. Would that such example of like somebody brought something and you addressed it and yes. that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah I, I, I address those comments all the time. And yeah. um, we built another facility in East Hampton. Actually, it was uh, adhesive applications. Yeah, so I built that one as well. Um, and there were some noise issues and, and odor 
control issues that were brought up and they were resolved. And, mm -hmm. and we are a company of our word. I mean, we live in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I live 15 minutes up the road. I'm in Deerfield all the time with my family going shopping, mm -hmm. going to restaurants, going to treehouse, different things. You know, this is a community and obviously mm -hmm. I'll, I'll respect their asks in, mm -hmm. in, if they're reasonable. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. appreciate that. Uh, you the comment? You didn't, hi, Mark Donovan, 34 South Main Street. Um, you didn't want to pin them down to it, but uh, I and, and well, I, actually, that was per oh, right. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I respect that you, you know, you uh, in the past have mitigated things when things have come up, um, but it seems to me that I've heard from a lot of residents that things have been promised by the rebar company, by the DPW itself. And it sounds like people are working on it, but once things are up, things are up, and then people do walk away. And sometimes <laughs> they change jobs. You might move to Ohio to do something else. I'm you never know. <laughs> I'm just saying a commitment, and maybe a, a commitment in in written in well, might you, be to you, to review in the future might well, be. Uh, there nice. is a process to, the, and this is the process here is to make to set stuff in stone in this process in our approval. So if there's something that we wanted to add now on the plan, that's when we should do it. And I think if you're, if you, you know, if you're willing to adjust a light or put one tree in or something like that, mm -hmm. I obviously, you know, in a year from now, we can't pin you down to like, Hey, you need a whole row of trees here at $50,000. That's a different story that should be done right now. So if there's things that we should address and pin you down on, Currently, we should do that now, and then if there's a small item here and there, and you show mm -hmm. a willingness to drop in a tree or a, you know, adjust a light or something like that, that makes more sense. So I'm hoping we could, you know, if there's a specific the item plan, right now. I think with the lighting plan, I think it's clear that we, sh you know, there should be uh, an adjustment if there is an offensive light because sometimes it's installed at an angle that's not actually correct. Yeah, it so should meet the plan that's it, that's out. The, I think having the plan adjusted at a lighting plan versus a planting plan is two different things. Mm -hmm. And I think a lighting plan that needs to be reviewed if there's a complaint is diff is certainly doable. Yeah. And that falls within our pur purview. And I don't think that is necessarily anything that is costly. It's just <clears throat> could be an angle or a, a different kind of light, whatever. So. I mean, I think that's more than reasonable. So what you're saying is now is the time to talk about always shrubs yeah. and trees yep. and, and fences and yep. that sort of thing. It's a site I, plan review. I was yeah. a little confused. You said there was a um, stockade fence, but I, was, I sure. wasn't sure which, yeah. which. Arguing when you say west and north, I get confused. It, uh, I think in streets. Okay. Um, most of the year, there's ample vegetative buffer between the project. The trees, and yeah. Houses. And How much of Thayer Street is impacted by, you know, being able to see your building? Um, between the DPW building and the supermarket. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're right there. Between Pilot and DPW. Not and really. then, um, What's open space on the western side of Pilot, which may or may not in the future become. So there's quite a distance there as far as light is concerned. Yeah. yeah so um, I did a measurement to the nearest property line from our property line, which um, is the roadway to behind the DPW, the residential, it's 305 feet. So you have 305 feet separation distance. You also if you drive down Merrigan Way and you look at where uh, past the pilot precision, there is some pretty well vegetated arborvitae is already there and coniferous trees has a divider there. And in, when we did that job, we couldn't touch those. We had to leave them. Right. Similar to this, we're leaving all that natural vegetation and we're adding vegetation to the area. Um, so, you know, I think, I think we've covered all the ground here. And, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, whether it's approved or not, it really comes down to holding us to your, your zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, and in my professional opinion, and Greg, who's your peer reviewer, and Mark, who also does this, you know, we've met all those requirements and we set forth a plan that 
meets those requirements and satisfies those. So right. that's my my opinion. But yep. would would it make any sense that there would be a seeing that the loading dock is on the South Main area? Uh, and there is woods there, I understand, mm -hmm. but would stockade fence not make sense there as well? Or you, you also have to remember there's that pond, that pond is probably 100, 100 feet wide. So yeah, that pond's like 120 feet wide. 120 feet wide. And then you have the this pines is, behind this it. This a pond that exists or no, were created? created. No, yes. but the other here is probably 220 feet. Okay. Gotcha. So you, you have plenty of distance there, as well as the plantings that we're adding there, as well as the coniferous pine trees we're adding there for additional buffer. And that came up in the previous meeting, and we've said, okay, let's add them, right? Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's it's a couple pine trees. It's it's easy, yeah. right? Okay. And that Thank just you. also shows our willingness to work with you guys, yeah. really. Thank of course. you. Thank you. I'm, I'm all set. Can I? I'm comfortable. Oh, another comment? Wonderful. Thank you. Just state your name again for this this <laughs> hearing. Thank this you. This is Hannah Yaffe. Thank uh, you, Hannah. I live on Beaver Drive. Nowhere near this. <laughs> God. Um, so this is actually uh, a question for the select board. It might not even be under your purview. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering. I'm wondering how, as a resident and a taxpayer. Um, here in Deerfield for the last five going on six years. Um, is it public information? Um, how can I find out, how can the residents find out what are the tax breaks that some of these industries are getting sure. while we pay full taxes? Yep. I'm just curious, is that public information? Sure. Because, no? Certainly. Yes. Yeah. The town well, voted for them. And yeah. Town meeting. We we approved the tax break. Yep. Yeah. Tax I mean, break. we don't have a solid number because they don't have a building up yet, and so then it needs right. to be assessed and all of that stuff. Oh, it's but, not just them. I'm oh. thinking Pelican. I'm thinking like all well, of the I different. Don't think there's it. there's no, nothing there's else Pelican. open right now. I'm sorry, I can't hear um, all of you at the same there's, time. There's um, th I don't believe there's any other business there's right. Right now, that has a tax incentive program. Mm -hmm. It's only for bringing new business, um, and this only lasts ten years. It, it's it's what well, it's yeah. like been True. Drakarski's. Um, it's been uh, Berkshire Brew. It's been Richardson's Candy Kitchen. Um, I, I, I can you. Sorry. It's been Prokarski's. It's been Berkshire Brew. Mm -hmm. It's been um, Richardson's Candy Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of you know tax breaks, and they're mm -hmm. all, all done. As far as I know, at this point, so there are no there are no other businesses that get right. any tax breaks. But they're going to get a ten year tax break. Yeah, it's prorated, so it, it, it dis right. disappears disappears after a I while. I think that people it, would the, the whole know that. I, the they whole did. idea they voted on it. Yep, they right. did. Yeah, it was it went through town meeting, and the mm -hmm. whole idea is it triggers the state um, um, opportunities for a tax break on the state level. And really, the whole idea is to get jobs here. Right. right. Good it's, paying it's jobs. Well, paying jobs. wages. That means it's, it is for us. I it mean, that's us. because it, it we is, need to run our town. It is, but um, I mean, I'm, I'm an interpreter for deaf people and I've interpreted for the Master Rehab Commission. Um, they send people up here from Springfield, Holyoke, Chicopee for Yankee Candle. So, you know, those are the people. I mean, it's not just Deerfield people who are taking the, the jobs. Oh, I agree. No, th this job and this manufacturing is for Western mass manufacturing because mm -hmm. it brings jobs and money and they'll buy this, they'll buy lunches here and they may stay overnight or they'll, they'll do all kinds of things and they'll mm -hmm. maybe come here, raise a family or it's for the region for sure. But it's, it's our tax money on that building that we, we get we and that's how we reduce your tax bill long term. Right. We, this is this isn't on the tax rolls right now. So getting it on the tax rolls ultimately reduces your taxes. Ultimately, yeah. yes. <clears throat> after, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. this well, is no, like they're getting they're paying tax day one, and then eventually it's a prorated thing. It disappears to nothing, but in you know, in short order, even even still, they're paying tax. I mean, and that's the whole idea. Right now, we're getting zero tax on that property because mm -hmm. we own it. Mm -hmm. Well, where no, was that information? Actually, they, I mean, is it somewhere in? It, it was in the town meeting warrant. 
Assistant Town Meeting Guide. Is it still something that um, sure. we can yeah. access? Of course. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. I just have You're a welcome. comment on that as well. So I, I will say, um, based on that, local jobs, right, and the importance of that. So we had previously, you know, Deerfield wasn't the only site selection process that we we looked in Winchester, New Hampshire. There's a Stone Mountain Business Park there. There was also opportunity to move it out of state completely. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff and his company decided they wanted to keep these business local and they wanted to retain their employees and they wanted to give to a community that they've been in for so long, right? So that's important to know. Mm -hmm. um, it states a lot about their business and um, their morals, right? Yep. Thank you. That was also part of the RFP process yeah. is mm -hmm. to make sure we had a business that was committed and clean to come to our community. Hi, my name is Rocky Foley, 16 South Main Street. Uh, at the previous meeting, I was the one that brought up uh, about putting in uh, deciduous trees and the, more mm -hmm. pines and stuff like that to take in consideration this time of the year when the leaves are down and, you know, uh, the light <laughs> didn't shine through. And I appreciate you uh, following up on that. So I just want to let you know. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate, appreciate it. Any other comments? Oh, hey, Deborah. One more. Super quick. I actually wasn't planning on talking again, but um, this is Tim. When you asked the gentleman about um, environmental angles, I just I, I wanted to follow up on that because it might be useful for Tim to know. And I'm curious, are you all having a hearing with the DEP or is it such the case that there's truly nothing on site? So DEP doesn't want to have a hearing with you. That's one question. And my second and final question is, are, what's on site that needs an MSDS sheet? Is there anything? Just the stuff that you clean your hands with? Maybe that doesn't even need an MSDS, a material safety data sheet. Thanks. No, I'm gonna, I'll handle the MSDS. So they've moved to safety data sheets now. So every um, material that we purchase, uh, chemical we buy for even eye cleaning mm -hmm. uh, spray, Everything has an SDS sheet that is within the walls of our of our um, building. So we actually have folders with every every sheet for every product. Yeah. Um, they have to have, of course, contain you know firefighting uh, procedures and you know that's a requirement that when the fire department walks through, they look for things like that. Yeah. Right, and it's also it's our right to know. I'm more letting Tim and people know too. It's our right to know what those. You know, if you've got 20 of them, if you've got 200 of them, and, and what chemicals they're for. And uh, DEP isn't part of the project. It's a degraded yeah. site to right. begin with. Yeah, but even still, I mean, the DEP, the Conservation Commission's ruling on the wetlands perspective of this, and I understand you have to go back to them for one issue. Yes. Um, and that's going to be taken care of at the end of yeah. November? It's, uh, they're holding a special meeting <coughs> November 10th. Okay, great. So. Great. Um, oh, we got one more question. That's okay. No, this is the time to have them. Right. So, I'm Sarah Alley. I'm at 14 South Main Street. Yep. I just, um, I feel like this is a big project and it's going to have an impact on Deerfield for many, many years. It will. Right. Yep. Um, and I hear that going through bylaws for future issues is the way to go. And I hear that is mm -hmm. probably the best way to go. Yep. I guess I'm just thinking again about things like trees and lights, which I don't, those are not things that would be, are those, would be, they be addressed in the bylaws if it was a problem yeah, later? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm yeah. just thinking of my personal experience with other companies who were yeah. built 40 years ago and now the trees yeah, are diff down. Yeah. Different so, bylaws. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yep. So I'm just. Yeah, please, please. If okay. you have, bring it to us, bring it, you know, we'll. This is also. The whole idea is to find out. expedited permit area is different than what was already previously built and zone somewhere else. Mm -hmm. This is under our control versus no control, basically, mm -hmm. you know, as pre-existing. Or a rail yard. Or a rail yard. I mean, there's not, there, uh, it's very hard to control the railroad. We are um, meeting tomorrow, just for people to know. We are meeting tomorrow as the Board of Health um, with the air monitoring up and down the Pioneer Valley, we are going to be joining part of that um, project, and we will be hopefully having some ability to, with data, to um, 
you know, for train idling and stuff like that. Um, this is going to be a long process, but we are really concerned about the complaints and we know the rail yard is not helpful. So, so that's not part the, of this. No, not part we, of this. So let's get, I just want people bring to it back. know that it is, not, bring it, back. it is not that we're not hearing it. It's just the rail yard is not <clears throat> and the railroad in general. They're idling and what they do with the ties, the train ties, they just move them from one place to another. And I know, <laughs> Trevor, I know. I'm just telling that the complaints have nothing to do with this poor process. And <laughs> we are trying to do everything we can. And we are following up. And I especially am sorry for Sarah, because I know she has had problems. But Alex has been out there at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock at night with you know noise calibers and stuff so we are trying to take care of it it's just okay. it's a long process so one final um question for you um do you put signs on your property saying turn off your diesel trucks um because i can't understand what reason a trucker would have to leave his truck running for 15 minutes. i know that there's a, a state law and probably a federal law that says you can't have these vehicles idling for any length of time so why would why would a trucker come to your facility, back up to it, and leave his truck right. idling for thirty minutes? It doesn't make any sense to me. The fuel is so darn expensive. So why would you, as a company, want to allow them to do that? So we don't have signs, but I should have said something. But I've I have not seen one truck idle idling while well, it's been loading or unloading and. You know, okay. years, five years, five, six, seven years. The diesels have changed a bit too. And before, like when it was super cold, like to start it back up again or something like that was an issue, but they've come a long ways with how they, they heat the heat the blocks and all yeah, that. Yeah, I don't mean to put it on you. I'm just trying yeah. to trying to reassure citizens that yeah, it doesn't make sense for a trucker to start at, it up and at, just you know, sit there. Eight, yeah. eight gallon, eight miles a gallon to be burning fuel that costs them six bucks a gallon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, I will say that all the truckers do get out of their truck. There's a shipping and receiving office kind of uh, right there where they check in with shipping and receiving. I'm more than willing put to a be, sign put a sign on the door that says, right. please turn off truck before entering. That'd be nice. No be idling. Nice. I'll right. put the sign It's on probably the something I should look at the procedures to make sure that what would happen if that got hit into gear while it was running and we had a fork truck. Right, right. So, exactly. Yeah. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll take a look at that. Oh, that'd be um, good. You know, safety you. Is, is, you. is first I, in everything I, we do. I just want to make clear the offenders are not, you know, this kind of operation. It's all yeah. right. It's the railroads and the other ones that have been here for quite a while. <clears throat> Any other topics of discussion on this? Otherwise, I'll make entertain a motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. And I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Um, so now the process is to um, uh, deliberate if we need or move on with a vote, or uh, I know we need, con uh, conservation's gonna look at that on the 10th. I don't have any other questions for the project, but maybe others do or wanna have time to read something or how do you wanna proceed? Um, listen if, to the if board. If you're meeting on the 10th, well, 11th is uh, Veterans Day, so we can't nope. do, uh, meet on the 11th, but... Um, I would feel comfortable because because everything has been taken care of except for that one drain. Um, I'm okay voting subject to a successful conservation commission finding. Yeah, and the only other thing I'd say is we do have a meeting on uh, September on November November ninth. The select board meeting at seven thirty. I know it's for one topic. Oh, um, yeah. So, I mean, basically what we're, if we were to, to take an action tonight, we'd be signing off on this subject to the Conservation Commission resolving Correct. this issue. And so um, I'm just gonna ask Greg one more time. I, I wanna be sure that the stormwater issues and um, what's the other issue that we were actually addressing that's our purview? Traffic. 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 traffic and the site plan as far as you're concerned there are no other issues that we as a select board should be concerned about no no we we are we're very satisfied uh okay. sve and the applicant have been very responsive to uh to the comments that we've made and i uh, you know i just again want to reiterate that 
um, Derek, you know, looked at our healthy soils um, action plan. And even though it's something that we haven't even really worked on, and we certainly haven't enforced it, he was, you know, able to see that he was complying as much as possible. And um, I think any kind of natural gra grass buffer that is planted in, in uh, native plantings is, is really important. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we're trying to have better retention of, of water in these frequent events that we have, and then have a release of water when we have drought. And, and this is the kind of thing that's really important. It's definitely gonna improve the site. It's a degraded, awful stuff fallen, you know, it's just dumping into the surrounding area. So to have this built and improvement. then have um, this kind of development happen, I think is gonna be an improvement. Mm -hmm. So thank you for looking at that, Derek. You're welcome. Somebody wanna make a motion? I will make a motion to approve this subject to satisfactory sign off by the Conservation Commission. You have a comment? Yeah, it's separate. So, so I, don't think, it has I think ours well, is done. Well, because it won't pass if they don't pass then. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, we're, I guess. All right. Yeah, just, it doesn't have to be contingent on them passing, right, but then we know that they have that process. And yeah. Yeah. And I think you've addressed it already. You just have the meeting to go. Right. Right. So. All right. Then I'm, I'm satisfied then. Okay. Do we have a second? Or do you want me a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. We're on your way to building. Well, after the 10th, hopefully. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate thank your you. time. Really yeah, appreciate thank it. you for answering all the questions and concerns of the residents. Yeah. And I know that they'll probably revisit as things go along, but we as a select board will try to team up with you and solve the problems as they, yeah. as they arise. If you need anything or if, or if anybody in the community sees anything, and just please come come to us i know that they've always been i mean when we work with pilot very responsive so please reach out to us and we can we can touch base yep. thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you guys very much appreciate all your efforts thank you uh so that being done um glasses back on what else do we have tonight select board announcements anybody have anything oh i do oh wait for you no, go. Um, uh, so I had, had our sewer meeting today, a monthly sewer meeting in waste in, in um, South Deerfield at the plant. We're um, moving along really well there. We um, let's see. We looked at. Um, I mean, I've been starting to post updates on Deerfield now a little bit just to get people to see what's happening at the plant. But we've got. Um, they're going to. Excuse gonna, me. Oh. Excuse me. Could you just? We need to finish. Oh, yeah, it's in interfering. The People can't hear us on the. Thing. Thank you guys. Thanks thank you. for coming. Yeah, Appreciate thank you it. for coming. See you soon. Uh, so the 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 um, they're compacting the clarifier right now. That's been a little bit tough with the rain, but um, but they've got some good weather this week, so they're compacting all that in. Um, the the headworks building is just about complete. We're waiting for um, a part of equipment that's been on back order, but but pretty much that's good. They're working on the siding on the processing building and all the ductile uh, iron pumps, uh, piping and stuff that's going on in there. Um, they're gonna start working on a plan for um, coordinating the startups. Um, so uh, of the different equipment and then um, they're, I think that they're not gonna have to leave. They're gonna be able to stay on site and start on the change order, which is the aeration work. Um, tomorrow they're evaluating the wall between the two aeration tanks. They were gonna cut down around five feet. We may have to go a little bit lower because they wanna make sure that that cement is in good shape. So um, everything looks pretty good there so um i mean we're still on target we're still you know we haven't spent any other than the change order that we all signed off on but you know we're still around sixty thousand. so um i think that that's about it he gave me some data for tomorrow's meeting so i'll share that with you later i've got all that here um yeah so we're in good shape there good anything else no um, we oh just uh, just again uh, elections are coming up next week. Please come and 
have oh. your voices heard. So it's good to, um, that, that's all I got to share on that. Please vote. Um, I, uh, so we're going to Board of Health? Yeah, sure. I, I just want to reiterate um, again that uh, what we're hearing at all my DPH meetings and other uh, epidemiology groups that I'm part of is that this flu season is going to be the most severe since 2009 when we had H1N1. And so please, if you haven't gotten your flu shot, please try to get it. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's early. The hospitals, um, I had a Homeland Security meeting yesterday, and um, the hospitals are filling up. And, and this is really early. This mm -hmm. is earlier than we normally have. And there's a lot of people sick in the schools, not from COVID. This is, you know, people out for respiratory, uh, respiratory stuff. stuff. The RSV um, mm -hmm. is really affecting kids and elder elders. And, and this, is, this is really serious. So please, please try to be as careful as possible. Mm -hmm. um, mask up if you're in uncomfortably close places. That's all I can say. While we are on Board of Health stuff, um, we have three bills outstanding to pay uh, on that, on our um, 1888 building. And uh, we got to figure out what we're going to do with testing over there. Are we going to close that down? Who's well, going to pay the bill? Because somebody needs to pay that bill. And I guess it's going to be the Board of Health until we, we get haven't that figured it. out. We haven't budgeted it. And, Somebody's got to come up with it. And it's they're only over there for nine hours a week. So we've got to either. <clears throat> so I, I would just suggest going to now. the, yeah, but there's still going to be electricity and heat in that building. Who's going to pay? Right, it? but you're going to bring it down. That Kevin will have to bring it, pay it from then on, but well, temperature can, at 50 and. Yeah. You know what I well, mean? Well, they, they had offered to go outside. Okay. We don't have to have them use it at all if we want. Or well, we yeah, just I'm just saying down. we got we got to pay those three bills. It's got to come out of somewhere and um, we got to figure out what to do. Uh, Brenda asked me they're about overdue. So she wanted us to talk about it tonight. How and much are what they want to do? I, I don't know. No, no. Well, it's, it's a couple hundred dollars now of electric bills. But yeah, I can honestly say a couple lights on for the PCR. I mean, there's two people sitting and we can stop cleaning in there and they don't need to clean in there. Well, okay. if, if somebody's using the building, it has to be cleaned. At least basic cleaning. Like once a month. It doesn't so, need to be, they're not, no one's hardly using it. No one's it. using it, right? No I mean, they're just going to, I think either we stop the use or if they're going to use it, they're using it as is and we take the temperature down and we, we, we do, we could it. lower the temperature, but if somebody's going to be using it, they have the same expectation of temperature that you would have in a regular office building here. Then let's, let's stop it. No, they're outside it. at GCC. I think it's we, November. I think we, so it doesn't matter. They're outside anyway. Okay. I mean, so yes, that question came to me as well. Um, nobody anticipated not being able to use that building completely. Mm -hmm. So there's only one other place to take the, that money from. However, it becomes a stretch on that budget. Right. And frankly, if PCR, if the board wants to stop doing the PCR testing, um, because there's local testing that's available that relieves some of the pressure because we can lower the temperature and we can, we should anyway, let's do it anyway. So well, it's, it's, not the high right. it's not high, but there's a comfort level there, Carol. They are going to be outside or they offer to be outside. They are outside at GCC. It, it we're not so giving, why don't why doesn't that get coordinated first because we'll talk, with, talk with kevin figure out what the temperature needs to be so the things so that we're not freezing pipes and all that stuff let's figure out just, how much they need keep to have it, you just keep it at what it is not to freeze the pipes they're there for nine hours a week it's not a big deal there's a couple light bulbs on when they're there for those nine hours that's it so i'm in favor of like ending it and turning the temperature down and getting it done so that we can Just save on the bills, the but or, um, or drain all the pipes so it doesn't freeze. Well, no, there's still some work that has to be done yeah. through the design planning yeah, phase so we'll for keep, the 1888. We'll keep building. the water on. We don't, but don't think we have to drain. But it shouldn't be all on Kevin's head because 
it's not this was not an anticipated expense well then we'll get a transfer from reserve at the end of the year to cover that but at some point somebody's got to take over that bill and if we're not the board of health's not the senior center's not we so didn't budget it's up it. to town we didn't budget we'll it budget it next year we we can budget it for next year but mm -hmm. what i'm saying is is that was not a functional expectation Correct. during the budget process no everybody um, assumes and it really is a board of health function at least that's what or we're going to get rid of it so me. it's not a board no, of health function any longer i don't agree that it's a board of health function in the sense that it should be charged to the town it's a convenience for our residents i think we when there was it no there other testing in the county we now have testing at gcc so what's it's the outside. pleasure of the board i'd like to see it done do you mean you care. would like to see us stop doing pcr testing nine hours a week so I, I, I'm not having an opinion about it. No, oh, my, so my point is, um, yes. Yeah, so my point is if we're going to be spending, I don't know, six or 700 bucks a month on heating and air and all that, whatever the cleaning and all that, I'm not sure the number, yeah, whatever exactly. that number yeah, whatever is, is. Yep. I would rather end that testing, direct people to GCC and uh, reduce the amount of cost. Uh, cost, but if we're not, if we're going to spend it anyways, I'm fine with them going there. Like, I don't like, you don't have to end it, but I'm just oh, thinking we should. Reduce no, I just was trying to clarify that your position was that since GCC has a PCR testing setup, that mm -hmm. it might one, one possible thing was for us to consider stopping it here and sending them to G GCC. And I, I defer to defer to Carolyn because she's much more involved in this mm -hmm. board of health uh, stuff than I am. Um, so I would like to get her opinion. Um, well, is there a need for it to be done here or is it just when we when we set up the PCR testing, there was no other testing in the whole county. Right. And if we waited for an outside kiosk, it was going to be six to eight weeks right. where there was no testing available anywhere mm -hmm. in Franklin County. And then they'd have the outside kiosk. I felt that that building is un underutilized and, and and at this point not used so having a couple of people sit there with a couple light bulbs on for nine hours a week is not a huge expense but i also don't want to go say to the finance committee that we are now pick, picking up the entire cost of the 1888 building because we have PCR testing for nine mm -hmm. hours a week. That's not a board of health. That's not how I want to spend mm -hmm. our board of health money right. to run that building. Yep. I think the it can the, certainly they run outside with no no heat and in all weather. So, so turning the heat down to fifty five or fifty is perfectly fine. Are we should we be cleaning that building uh, once a month? Yes, you need to wipe out the building. You need to wipe down the building and it should be clean just because we want to make sure that it's not deteriorating any less. But do we need a cleaning service for the PCR? No, absolutely not. The people are not even there to probably go to the bathroom once or twice a week. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. So I, if we're going to take it on as a Board of Health expense because nobody else wants to pay for it, all right, I'm going to the to the finance committee at, and it's a reserve transfer and say, look, this is being forced on the Board of Health. This is not a Board of Health expense. I don't feel like it's Board of Health expense, but nobody budgeted for it. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody expected yeah. us to yeah. like, leave so, this. So is the PCR testing free? Yes. Yeah, okay, so, and and basically people, the public who goes in there, they go in and two minutes later, they're out. Right. Yeah. So they're going to wear their jackets anyway, and they're going to stick a swab up their nose. Yeah, right. Um, the question is, do they want to, do the people who are doing this PCR testing, are they willing to do it inside at a, a temperature that Kevin would normally have the building because it's, it's a zero occupied building? And it, I'm sure they will because they would normally be outside anyway. So that would be the only expense then would be a light bulb or two, um, and they presumably would shut them off when they leave. So I, I, it, maybe it's a conversation with the, the PCR test provider to see if they still want to continue. They want to do it under those conditions. And, and I defer to, to Casey about whether that presents any problems. 
No, I think that's a question for Alex White. He set up the PCR testing. He could take that forward and mm -hmm. ask them under what conditions would they want to continue? Because we have to be mindful that their expectations for yeah, how their staff of course. apps in a building, yep. because mm -hmm. even in a kiosk, they still have some protection from the weather. Yeah, if they want, if, yeah, it's totally up to them if they but want to continue. And I, I think if we- it, I would think that what we'll do is we'll have Alex is he still here? He's not still here. No. So okay. I will tell Alex yeah, that yeah. to get ask, in touch with them. And then Alex needs to just ask them, do they, would they consider continuing operation under whatever temperature Kevin, is the building going to be at 50 or 55, right. whatever, whatever temperature Kevin says the building's going to be at, then do, would they mind continuing operating for the winter? And then That's we it. may need to help out Kevin's budget at the end of the year, because right. he was we not expecting to spend yeah. any money on he that. Wasn't. And, right. and so that's part so of the let's, question. Let's help yeah. him as well. Yeah, that, the question I had was the building, either the, the all the, the water lines and everything have to be shut off and drained and, mm -hmm. um, or it has to be maintained at a certain minimum temperature. Right. Yes. And, and that's what I was saying. If there's a minimum temperature that Kevin has to maintain that building at, then mm -hmm. he needs a transfer from uh, yes. from another department yeah. because that's an unanticipated thing. I mean, basically, mm -hmm. he has to keep he has to maintain the church building, right. which is empty. He has to maintain yeah. that building, which is empty. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a that's a different question. Yeah. Um, so. So if that we could work through those question, ideas, but frankly, we just we yeah, wanted we to wanna ask the question clarify because it. yep. it's. And then, asked of us. and then we just need a number from Brenda what how much those bills are I mean they were expected probably out of the senior center budget at the time but right. she she left and we're kind of left hanging like okay so where we got to figure out where that's going to get paid from well I don't building really... maintenance would normally be the budget we would pay that from. okay but I would prefer to have a conversation with Kevin and Brenda about it yeah in I know terms she... of expectations because yeah. normally we don't do transfers until we're until we've already hit a yeah. point where we've over just so that but we're the, all aware the problem of it at the is, end of the year. not anything that the board of health had ever budgeted no, for so that. there is no budget line in right. the board of health budget for yep. maintenance of the 1888 building mm -hmm. right i mean that's mm -hmm. not yep. an anticipated expense on our part so let's we'll but i also feel out. like it's not really the board of health's responsibility either mm. so it's not it's so we're done with it whatever okay and okay. it's up to them whether they want to continue in a building that's different. So oh, that's something. the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, so, I mean, all right. Sorry to derail the conversation no, that's okay. like no, that, that's but okay. she mentioned it to me. She's like, we got these bills to pay. You got to get this figured out tonight. So that's I want to do that. Yeah. So no, I just want to um, yep, clarify that uh, so that we have Deborah Rosenstein who's got her hand up, but I want to clarify for her that our public comment period's over. Right. And so if you're staying here to make a comment, um, then we're probably not going to recognize you, but if you're staying here because you like our conversation and you just want to <laughs> see what's on our minds, stay all night. <laughs> please, please. Just at least so you know, it's about the PCR testing, but I can send you an email instead if you would like. That, that would be helpful just to be fair to everybody. Yeah, no thank problem. You. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we've got done. That's done. Uh, we did the minutes already. We did the anti-hate statement. We did the Kindle one day liquor licenses. We have, um, we do need to talk about the um, assistant town clerk, assistant town administrator job description changes, temporary pay adjustments during staffing shortage, pay ranges for assistant town clerk and interim treasurer collector. So, do you want vacancy. To so I had sent you a couple forward. of. I sent you a memo about the assistant town clerk and the assistant town administrator job description. Yep. Um, I got some feedback from the interim town clerk about a couple of things. So that prompted a change in that job description. Now, I wouldn't put this forward. I mean, this is a minor change, I think, to mm -hmm. some extent, but the expectations about when the assistant town clerk can be expected to work in support of elections and voting should be addressed and yep. so we try to address that in a way that recognizes working outside of normal office hours because during elections and early voting that's required um and then in terms of the assistant town administrator um i noticed that the assistant town administrator uh reports reports to section should say that town administrator and it didn't so okay i asked for that change in terms of the assistant town clerk pay range i hadn't because of how that happened and the fact that the by the time we had 
found out it actually, um, we needed to get that vacancy up while the board wasn't here to hold a meeting to discuss it. So I threw that vacancy up and we, we did a pay range that we've used similar parameters with in the past. So it was one to three, step one to three in the grade that's identified for that pay, for that position, which is C. Um, I just need the board to recognize that. I had the personnel board look at it. Um, is that, uh, is this, is this, this memorandum you're talking about? And the one that there's has, two. Yeah, They're I know. The same. Yeah. So I no, just, that's a different, that's the second one. Okay. The first one is the assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Assistant that's the, that one. Yeah. Yep. And are the pay ranges? Oh, the pay here. ranges are there. They are in the memo. Um, not yeah, they're in the memo. Okay, so it's the forty six. Yep. Nine thirty eight. And that's that recognizes grade C steps one to three. Mm -hmm. And that's what we advertise for. And frankly, that's the same. Those are the similar parameters as as we've used for other positions. And I did get that approved by personnel. Okay. Admittedly after the fact and i'm not a huge fan of that but considering the time frame that we had um both brenda and i thought it was prudent to get the position vacant and so they're up now we have we actually have a very uh wide candidate pool and we've started reviewing the applications uh, chris has been very helpful in doing preliminary work for us I did see the governor signed, right? The governor signed. We are good to go. Thank you. So the planning I ranted pieces weeks now. ago, we but I want to say Joe thank you, Joe Comerford, and thank you, uh, Natalie Governor Blay, and thank you, Natalie Governor Blay, Baker. For governor Baker. <laughs> um, <laughs> we didn't wait until the end. <laughs> no, I'm very grateful. Uh, so I, I think helpful. Joe, 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 and Natalie really, went to bat Joe for and us for sure. Really, really well. Oh, and stuff. I can't thank them enough. Oh, yeah. I was. Yeah too short a couple of weeks ago and um i really appreciate all i do i talked to joe today so um great oh speaking of which i know we are we went beyond the selectman's thing but um joe sent me an email today um about five hundred thousand dollars worth of work that mass dot can we do this one first? Yes. And then come back yes. to that just i just sorry. don't want I, to forget I, we won't because i know okay. that yeah we'll talk yeah, about I got that the same one yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so, do we? Do you just need an approval on these. I would uh, like the board to approve the request that I put through, just so it's it's all clear for everyone. So, uh, entertain a motion for on the um, assistant town clerk, assistant uh, town administrator request. Okay. Uh, I I will make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion on these? Yeah. All those in favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you for your work on that. I know staff is number just, one. It was just functional things stuff. that we weren't. Yep. I know. We got to get we got to get up to speed. Um, okay. And then this. There's a second memo for temporary pay adjustments for two people. Okay. Um, administrative assistant Cole and administrative assistant Hershen Redder, who's in the audience listening. Yep. <laughs> Well, everybody um, has really stepped up uh, they really during stepped this up time, and, we and had I, to I'm totally good I mean, with just that. answering work. the phones is a huge problem. The it's phones, been immense. posting the notifications that's a huge piece of Alex what the been... assistant town clerk did. So we had to readjust. We had to redeploy people to handle that differently mm -hmm. because we're down staff. Well, every we time have I interim come into this building, counselor. Alex is in a different desk. I know Alex <laughs> moves desks quite frequently. He has been um, a lifesaver to help and, out and tremendously. And, really and Pat's been doing a great and, job. And um, worked well to yep. help meet the needs that have cropped up because of these turnovers. Yeah. So I wanted to recognize both Alex's work and Pat's work mm -hmm. to make these adjustments be redeployed and take on additional responsibility outside of what the expectations of their positions are. All right. Um, the assistant town clerk position had a higher level of judgment and complexity in terms of some of the requirements that mm -hmm. are statutory related to notifications and such. So I wanted to recognize that. So the request is to, on a temporary basis, move from one pay rate step up to, to the next one step up, sorry. And I, I support the effort to reward good work. And I just have to ask, a, can you just clarify when you say temporary, what 
what does that mean? Does that mean for a period of months or does it mean? For a period of months while we get someone on board and get them okay. trained and yep. while we need that support. And you'll you'll be reporting back to the select board or making a decision that that's no longer necessary? Yes. And we, we've done that in several, in, in other instances, like okay. when we had the public works director out, mm -hmm. um, we did a temporary pay adjustment for the assistant superintendent because again, there was a, 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 a workload and, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the wastewater folks too, because of the lack of staffing really created additional workload and responsibility that- I do have to say that they're uh, just down there today. Um, that team is working great. Eric is doing an excellent job and he's got two great staff and, and Gary is really, um, Gary's temperature's down okay. and he's got staff and he's, planning a vacation which is which is uh unheard of after the last couple of years so um i thank them a lot for their work too so everybody's really stepped up i'm super proud of our staff at deerfield for sure so so, uh, so do we need a just uh, need just a motion to approve these to two approve. retroactive pay i'll make a motion to approve um temporary up uh staff group reward payments pay adjustments for, pay for, adjustments. for I, I services above that. and beyond I, I will second the adjustment. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you so much. They will appreciate it. Yep, we appreciate them for all they're doing to keep us up afloat. Um, so the, what else do we have here? Um, so can we go back to the Oh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I read that email again, okay? So... Can I just say something quick and then yeah. I'll pass it back? So Joe called me today and we're, uh, Joe Comerford called today and um, we were talking about, she's been doing a lot of help coordinating between DOT and the town with a cake that you've been working on, the location of that and, some, and then Sugarloaf yeah, Street yeah. and the Common and um, a lot of things. But, um, and we were working on trying to get another meeting and really DOT is, is hoping and Joe is hoping that we could um, recommend somebody to work as a, a working group first to, to flush out a few things and then come back to a select board meeting. Um, so anybody, one of us can go and do that. And then um, and then she mentioned that, that um, the head of district two, I'm drawing a blank on her name. She's- uh, uh, Patty, Patty Leavenworth. Yeah, Leavenworth. She, um, so she had offered, so when we talked about this common, DOT said, well, if you're going to do the common, you've got to fix some of the crosswalks and kind of drew some some work. And we said, yeah, that looks great, but that's we don't that's not our road. And it's probably five hundred thousand dollars worth of work. And um, so it turns out that they are interested in ponying up about five hundred thousand dollars worth of work. I don't know what is contingent on what, because if you read that email, they're like they would they would go up to five hundred thousand, but they're not doing the sidewalks because right. it doesn't come into you know. So there's there's some discussion to have, and I think that that's a huge step forward for them to offer that kind of money to to do this. So I think somebody should go and negotiate and see what we can come up with. Yeah, and also just to determine um, that if I read that, did they make a mention of turning over certain parts of the road? And yeah. that, that's a question. Where does that stop? Yes. Yeah. In, yes. In my, in my mind, I'm thinking like by Ken's, the old fire station, you know, right. Park Street and maybe Conway right. is where, fine. Where the road straightens out and, yeah. and you know, once you go yeah. the, on the, graves there. The yeah. Key is that all infrastructure needs to be upgraded. Well, that doesn't sound good. No, that sounds like the uh, the volleyball team's back. Here's somebody's back. Mm. That's a bunch of Congratulations, stars. Frontier Sports. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I don't think it's a fire. I think that's everybody coming back into town after a win. Oh, good. I know the volleyball won. Well, the, the they honk, were state the champs. Honking sounds so. like that's, it's festivities. Yeah, now right. it yeah. sounds like a honking. Yeah, I'm happy, pretty happy to hear that. Happy honking. Um, so... So yes, I, I would think that area, all of Sugarloaf Street, I'm not interested in taking until we get some work done. Mm -hmm. But so I don't know what that negotiation is on their part. Mm -hmm. So I think there needs to be one of us and Casey to, and I think Kevin, Kevin and John and mm -hmm. uh, go and, go to work work yeah. that out. Yeah. So, uh, so more of a team approach, which is what I had thought they might. Yeah, do. and then and then come back to. They said they're more than welcome to come to the select board meeting, but there's there's underlying work to be Correct. done first, and that's what Joe thought. And uh, mm -hmm. so. 
Well, I just want to make great. sure that we don't slow it up by not appointing mm -hmm. a point person. Yep. And Trevor, since you're part of the common I'm group, happy to help. But if you want to meet with them, I'm, I'm happy to do that and bring everything back started. to you guys and say or this is what Kim, we're doing. If it's you want to get started because really of the care. Larry lot, well, yep. I, I don't. Somebody has to get going because we're going to be doing the Leary lot into the common. The common is ready to go, but we've been waiting on the state. So mm -hmm. we still have permitting questions from them for the right. Common. So the, that's the what the really whole, prompts us. We need to meet with them and get started so that the permitting sort gets sorted out. Or at least we get a temporary okay yeah, I mean, so we can move forward. If if nobody else has any better thought, I think Trevor's involvement in the in the common project would make him the best person to do this I, and trevor I, I mean i'm not just no i'm fine i'm happy to happy to help been, and i'll just bring back what they to say the to you all yeah. yeah right yeah and and then we're going to have to do it as a select board approved yes. something anyway so right course. but it, it's just i don't want to hesitate i mean right no if they want to we meet, have five hundred thousand that they want to spend maybe they need the problem is that could be money go away by July 1st right. of next year. So yeah, we, and we'll see what we need to pony up that to make so our over part from happen. Project or something mm -hmm. like that. So right. if they're willing to give us five hundred thousand, let's get on it right now. Right. Yeah, we, we can get, get Jeff decide there. Decide what we're going to do because he's been doing all the engineering. On yeah, it. they right. should so. suggest that Jeff come. And before yeah. I inter, inter, you know, asked really, I wanted this conversation yeah. to happen mm -hmm. because okay. so there it's we go. really a team meeting approach. And right. There so might even be some costs that were originally going to be in the, the common, like related to yes. parking spaces or whatever that could be right. taken over by the 500,000. If that's in fact a real number. Yep. So well, you're, I think you're better when they said up to Joe said up to 500, so right. that in my mind, what that meant was, is that some project ended up with excess money and but my concern was that that money might disappear by July 1st and oh, yeah. it wasn't committed to us right yeah here so we need to not we'll waste jump on it. any time we'll work yep. with Casey yep. and come up with a okay date. It, I feel okay. like it could be just something yeah minor. it's available for a short period of time yeah. and if somebody else grabs it it won't be available right well it just it rolls back if we don't grab it these are kiff these are kiff things you need to sign we did this already right it's a new you project need to sign the chip and I'll get Jeff back in here to sign it okay <laughs> I'm signing well, where now, chairman is, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So does the TIF paperwork you're looking at is actually what Hannah Yaffe had. had do we used, need to sign? You sign as well. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah, each one of you yeah. needs to sign it. Now that the town meeting has voted, we can sign that, have um, you can sign it. Oh, right, right. Because we, we need get their it, vote. get it off to, to MDOD. Yeah. And I thought about it late this afternoon. That's why it wasn't. I didn't oh, think to put it in the packet. Yeah. I this is part of the catch up that we do after town meeting. Mm -hmm. So the town clerk is working on the minutes right now. Um, Brenda's working with her and I've got some stuff I need to do. So Dan Graves is also, he's checking through things. One, time, one time a night I actually signed my signature legibly. <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> um okay so that's all set so i'm just gonna let joe know very quickly yeah um, and i'm gonna copy kevin and john okay good so we have a um under unanticipated there's the board of health uh interim temporary hire is this um for um this we is, were gonna have kanicki come no, and do some work no no or this not? is this is an intern a umass uh oh there's a, it's a umass student madison who um, actually volunteered, but she's willing to do some of the emergency preparedness updating that we had gotten under the nature grant and the money has to be spent by December 31st. So oh, her so this availability is her and her uh, willingness, and she's like pre-med student mm -hmm. and she's done some public health, I guess. Anyway, the idea was that we were gonna just pay her a stipend. Out of the grant money. Out of the grant okay. money like $20 an hour or something. All right. Um, I, Alex is not here. No. Nope. Oh, but well, he was he wanting had, to talk about Charlie Kanicki for temporary hire for something. Oh, that uh, no. I can explain to you offline on that, but all right. Well, I, or go through Casey. On yeah. That. We'll just I'll let Casey know that. All right. It's not, we don't need to do that yet. All right. Sounds good. Um, hazardous mitigation grant statement of interest. Um, what, uh, I met with, um, you know, we have 
uh, John Pachorik and before um, we go into that, do we need to do do we need to oh, agree about the Board of Health and well, Oh, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, we probably should vote. Well, Casey said we need to vote, but yeah. well, so it's a hire. It's a even if it's a temporary hire, it's still hire. Okay. Um, I had a job description. I think you I, have it there. I, yeah, you mm -hmm. have it there. Okay. Um, Alex is going to put it into the town format, but I really don't have a lot of information about some of the background parameters on this because um, it. I didn't hear about it in the beginning. I sort of well, she was going to volunteer, so so it's just if it's but just, just uh, so it's assist, I, I guess the question is, what's the purpose to assist Alex with some of the work that's going on? Well, we we you know the our number or whatever that number was, Sam's number. We we didn't get our money for so long. Yeah, money. It, it, it was took like, quite a while. It was like two months or three months that we were supposed to get the money. And um, Cindy Majeski and Alex were supposed to be doing, you know, like our emergency, um, you know, my volunteer list, updating my volunteer list and stuff like that. And, um, but we, we didn't get our money because of the mess up of the, you know, no one had access to our SAMS number. So we got that straightened out. And then the money came in late. So it has to be spent by um december 31st and it is um one of the deliverables is updating our emergency preparedness kind of thing so we're just going to give her a little jobs and do outreach to our homebound people and work have her work with cindy um we have a donation of some uh, boosters and some flu shots so you know part of it is just making sure our homebound people are address you know their needs are addressed and stuff like that so she's just going to be working with us she originally was going to volunteer but um because we have these actual deliverables and we have money that no one you know out nobody has, has the hours so we're just going to give her a little small stipend be about fifteen hundred dollars or something total so is it a stipend or is it a pay rate? Because it has well, to be handled different. They're handled mm. two different ways. Well, it you know it's going to be. Um, we figured we should pay her at least twenty dollars an hour for her work. Um, She's going to you be, want me to confer with Alex about that. Yeah. And if the board, I mean, okay we with felt it, I felt it was a, st a stipend was what we were. If you do normally pay an intern, you do a stipend, but. When I talked to you, you said it should be hourly. So well, if it's I, I don't care whatever you want to do. If it's a stipend, we did we have paid interns in the past as stipends, but yeah, it depends on really what Alex intends, like the time frame. So I well, guess she's saying it's needs. saying like fifteen hours uh, per week for for up to three months, not to exceed one hundred and sixty well, hours we, from so November pay, to January. That's a per hour pay rate. More from more November than to January because if we're going to track hours, we should probably yeah make that clear cut. Okay. Well, that way you have a well, deliverable she's, to show. You know, you got the holidays in between. She's she's she has time before she goes back to school in right. January. So we said November, December, January. But all right. In fact, you know, you got the holidays. You got she's going back to school probably like the third week of January or the second week of January. So I mean, we just. We tried to write something up that would cover the so time frame. What I would want to do is confer with Alex on the pay rate that he thinks okay. would be supported. What's, what's easier for you guys for in terms of tracking financials? I mean, if it's a set stipend, is that an easier thing to do than to track you Hour. know, weekly hours and Hour. do weekly checks or biweekly checks or what's You're easier? You're gonna do a biweekly check no matter what. Okay. Um, so doing doing a regular payroll patient is just as easy as writing up a stipend. Okay. So if, if the stipend was $3,000 and you had, um, you know, 13 uh, pay periods, you just divide 3000 by 13 and that would be what you'd pay her or, or... I generally, uh, Brenda does that breakdown, but either way, we yeah. have to provide some documentation, whether it's yeah. me or Alex. So mm -hmm. it's just as easy, easy to write a stipend request as it is to do a payroll sheet. Mm -hmm. um, and would it be would it be better to have Alex do this to, so you don't have to? I just need so for purposes of actually getting things in in a process, communicating yep. between the financial and personnel people, it's helpful if the board votes to hire. Um, if 
the board um, has a set amount in their head they would like to pay, or if you want to do a pay, an hourly pay rate, it's if it's fifteen bucks and if it's fifteen hours a week or thereabouts, it's probably an hourly pay rate is easier to handle because okay. uh, it becomes a regular pay sheet. But um, I don't know. He mentioned a pay rate to me, and I can't remember what he said. So if the board's okay with Alex and I coordinating that. We I'm can fine. do that. It's just I want the board to vote knows, to hire because he, I don't have the He knows. He that. knows what we have. Um, he knows what we have in a grant. Right. Stuff. The base. The basic thing is, I don't want to have to return any money to Nature because we didn't spend it. So. And we yeah. should get deliverables for it. Yes. And, and so should. the deliverables are the piece that really come in with some of that just yeah. job yeah. description stuff. Yes. Yeah. The the main thing is to get some support for that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Um, so, so you, need you a guys motion? want to take a vote? All right. And what you could do, I just, motion you to... walked back in when I was telling them. That's okay. Um, you could... I'll, I'll make the motion that um, you and Alex sort it's out late here, but... yeah. what, what is going to be the easiest way to handle this. And Stipend to... or hourly. Fine. Right. Yep. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? You and Alan, me and Casey Warren and Alan, yes. Alex White. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, there's a one last item, which is the, um, uh, there was, I saw it here. It was a hazardous mitigation statement of interest. Do we yes, know what that we're, is? we're filling this out to, um, every year there's, uh, based on natural disasters, which in this last year was COVID. Um, so there's 110 million dollars in the hazardous mitigation pot which normally runs like 15 or 20 million mm -hmm. um and what it is is to you it's available for anyone in the you know any any project in the state that will reduce losses in the future so yeah what we're going to do is um apply for pine nook road right um because the, there's so much water coming off in these intense events that our road is going to go the pipes um sewer pipes are in terrible shape as you know and uh yep. um in, they and need the new water yep. type the, the embankment needs to be redone off a of laurel um cemetery mm -hmm. the, the water sheets off the laurel cemetery blocks on our road that yep. whole bank is going so there's bank stabilization there's water mitigation from the runoff from the entire hill mm -hmm. that ends up on five and ten i mean everybody so thinks that you... all the five and ten project was from the silt from steam mill which is true a lot of it was but also the water comes down pine nook and just right. sits there by richardson's too so it's so what just do you need dumping. what do you need from us i just wanted to update you on it oh we okay i thought we had you need a vote or something no no, no, no. i knew well, you were working we, on this we, and john we need and to we need to vote to move forward with the letter of, you know, the statement of interest. Okay. Um, because you have to be informed as part of the a, process. Do you have a motion? So I make the motion that we do fill out the um, statement of interest, which shows that we are ballparking seven or $8 million for the re redoing of Pine Oak Road completely, rebuilding. Mm -hmm. And then um, in that ballpark, and then we will actually file the grant December 5th. And who's doing the grant work? Um, the um, Eagle Brook okay. engineers yep. have- Just saving um, Casey over here. So. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> so, not Casey. No, appreciate that. We're yep. working on this as a group. Yes, a group I remember. John Pritchard. Yeah. Seeing John working and, on that too. Um, so hopefully our DUNS numbers and all our federal Same. numbers now are straightened out. Yeah. And uh, what we need to do is just have um the who is going to be responsible for the project and i was just going to say that um the chief the we should appoint john pachoric as as the um you know like the point person on this uh if you because he's DTW, the one that follows through yeah wouldn't it be dtw head no because um what it, I mean, not that I wouldn't, I know John can handle it all, but well, I'm just thinking is, you don't normally I, I hate, I, your... I don't want to add anything to Casey's plate. And what it is, is, you know, the following up of the engineers and stuff. And John will just do all that stuff. 
you know, because it's, it's, it's working with the engineers, making sure deadlines are filed and follow up is happening. I don't know. Yeah, we're just, this is during the, during the, the time when we're actually applying for the grant and then yes. follow up, uh, that's, that's going to stop in December when the filing deadline. Yes, yes. It's just, yeah, I mean, he's been involved in the project already and he knows he's motivated he's, all the and people. He's been going to meetings and stuff like that. So or, what do you or think, you Trevor? Can make me do it, but it's up to you I guys. Wanna, I don't, I don't want to be the ones that have to send out emails and set up. Oh, no, and I've stuff. got enough emails. Yeah, he gets enough emails. <laughs> I send, I send, a, no, I send enough emails. No, it's just that I create my uh, own problems. Not, <laughs> just, so you had a motion, right? Yeah, yeah. well, it's just. Do we have a second? Uh, first, what's the, what's the first motion? We're going to write a letter of interest, right? Yes. No, we, we are going to participate with a statement by submitting a statement of interest. Yeah. And I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then the second part is you have to have somebody is, because now the chief, you know, authorized body knows about it. So who is going to be the point person? And I would suggest that John Chork be the point person because he is so good about making sure. Is he ready? Does he want to do this? Well, he he offered to be uh -huh. the point. I mean, it's only for a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally, okay. we're so I'm good with that. Okay, so, so we have a motion. Give a second. You're okay with it. Uh, you, you're nominating John Pachork Jr. <laughs> and and I'm seconding it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn this is what happens aye. when you don't come to a meeting. Yeah. yeah. No, the idea is hey, just, what what can we what what can we assign to Alex the White? Organizing the meetings and organizing the paperwork is John Pachork's <laughs> issue now. Uh, Carolyn, what, what, what can we make Georgia Alex is. White do? What? What can we make Alex White do? <laughs> yeah. Since he's see. not on the meeting. He's not on the meeting. Let's check his fortune. Yes. We'll tell them right now what is. All right. Uh, okay. Um, and then, Casey, you did you did send Jen Hoffman that. Um, we did. Okay. Chris Holland sent it the other day. I, Motion so to we adjourn. Had, we had to correct something on it, so he resent it and he sent it to the state. Okay. Here. What we did, we had to fill out the paperwork for the state. It just says that we are agreeing to participate with Greenfield and that we are not replacing anything that we currently you know, pay for as Board of Health um, services with grant money. It's all going to be additional. That's we had just had to verify that. But we haven't we haven't gotten a contract yet from the state, and we don't have any money from the state yet. So that's not really an issue. I just just to let you know, it was Casey can fill out the form without yeah. without saying that there was no replacement of services because not a dime has come anyway yet. <laughs> Although I've been Story going to many lives. meetings to collect. I know. Been all <laughs> but I just, I mean, uh, uh, today, the today was an hour and a half meeting and you, you know, you had, they have the polling thing and you couldn't even, you can't even take text in the middle of the thing. Sorry. Are you signed up for MMA? Um, I don't know. I Did think you, you are, right? I, I asked, think you're signed up because I think I forgot to sign the table. Okay, I asked, I asked you. I asked Chris you. Longo? Yes. Chris going? Chris, I have asked you, Chris Go. Um, okay. Uh, remember last year we asked if Denise this and need, Denise Denise mm -hmm. Denise Do you want, we may need a transfer for that because any money that was left over from when we did that transfer before, right. we Went turned back. back over. So right. what I was going to say is um, let's get closer to the end of the fiscal year. But if Denise, if you want Denise to go yeah, I do. collectively, mm -hmm. Then we need to sign her up too, and she and I talked about it. Yeah, I would love her to be there. I, I just want you to sign me up for the uh, we email know. thing. Yep, because uh, did somebody say you signed up? Right? Yeah, did I yeah. Pick yours. Yeah, you did. I, what? Which was it? It was just the agenda. Oh no. Yeah. You, you want my agenda? agenda? Uh, yeah, I was just marking off things. And, no, yeah. I didn't. Oh, oh I wrote a little agenda. bit on the agenda. Yeah. Do you want mine? You can. Have no, that's okay. I, yep, I, no, maybe no, it's no. maybe it's on the back or something. Oh, here it is. I got it. Okay, good, good. She did. Okay, yeah, sent me the confirmation. Great. I thought Trevor beat me to it, but yep. yeah. it was within like a day. Yes. And then, um, okay, so these are all signed for you. I'll bring this in the office. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Get out of here before nine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Elchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Vote. Carolyn Ness, aye. Vote. 
Oh, yes. Oh. Please vote. I know. I'm actually. Vote, Rocky. Like your life oh, depends on it. It probably does. 